And we're live. Hi. Welcome, Sarah. So Welcome nice to the to real be talk. Here. Oh, I know. I'm actually so excited to have you on. You know, I've been stalking you on LinkedIn Whoa. when you started this. <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing. You're Thank doing you. Great things for the industry. Thank you. I'm trying, as in sense, you have to, you know, make the uncomfortable comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's really what I've been trying to do is build awareness. As you know, I've my family, so my family's in this business business for 40 plus years, and I really want to bring awareness and think because as, as I've been seeing things happening over years and conferences, I'm like, there needs to be some more flavor. There needs to be more awareness. What yep. do we do? You know, everybody always asks me, what's your company do? I'm like, we sell components, like components into what, you know? I mean, th right. there's so much more into it, like electronic components. What is that? You know, mm -hmm. what does it go? You know, these are, there's people think, oh, you're selling cell phones. You're selling. So there's so much things that, you know, we can you know, get into. And it's like, it's, it's sounds very, it gets complicated when I start telling you. We're in supply chain. We get into projects, design. <laughs> we go into, you know, active past electromechanical <laughs> components. And they're like, they're all they, scratching their head. They're all. Okay, yeah. so um, anyway, so yeah. how about that weather? <laughs> yeah. So this is, I know you've probably been into the same thing. Same and boat. Telling your friends and what are you doing, where you go. And, and of course, I've seen you've had a long history uh, in the industry sports from your family. That's really, yes. really what I wanted to start from is, uh, you know, who is Sarah? Who is Sarah Ke is Kehoe Northrop? Your Northrop is your, is your uh, married name. Married name. Yeah. Okay. It, oh, it's a long, long story. Okay. You know, I, we got married, Jeff Northrop and myself got married okay. 2012. We met in Vegas. So we oh, say what wow. happens in Vegas doesn't always yeah. stay in Vegas. That's don't tell me you met you meet at uh, at a bar, at a nightclub, or just walking in the casino. Oh, this, this is funny. This is going to get good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually knew had mutual friends uh -huh. and were there for Supercross finals. Okay. Uh, he raced professionally since he was sixteen. Well, that happens usually in May, right? It's in May. 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 Yeah, May. Very I know. good. I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I'm an OC boy. I know. Okay. I'm a metal, okay. I'm into all this stuff. That I'm a. I get dirty. I'm impressed. I get point dirty. One. I get one dirty. Point for you, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So we were there mutual friends for a race and we just started talking and at the end of it um of the of the weekend you know he's like hey and I kind of was blowing him off a little bit playing hard to get I guess yeah. you could say and then finally the last day he's like can I get your number I'm like oh okay and I was actually heading from Vegas to Light Fair in New York City okay. at the time so I'm like I'm doing a trade show and then we got into what do you do yeah. and and uh that's interesting and he still was like oh Okay. I don't know if still he knows exactly what I do, you know, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so yeah, so we connected after that and then um, we got married in 2013. Oh, oh. that's nice. That's what it's been seven years. It's going seven on eight years. It's going to seven years. Yeah. yeah. Well, or maybe 2012. 2012. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, you know, around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's yeah. great. I mean, uh, a lot has changed since then. And uh, what we're, you know, and, uh, and of course, you have uh, three beautiful children. Yes, I do. So I have yeah. Emma, who's eight, and I have Blakey, she's six, and then I have Haley. Hey, hey, who is three going on four in January? Hey, hey, is it the, Mo Mo the Moana, right? Hey, oh, hey, is from yeah. Moana. The Mo yeah, hey, she's, hey. <laughs> she's a handful. They always say, you know, the the youngest gives you a run for your money, and she definitely gives me a run for my money for sure. How about you? Because uh, you have two I children. I have two uh, great touch shots, a son and a daughter. Uh, my my daughter is Shaylin. She's just she turned four in June, and my son is Mason. He just turned um, three in uh, late about August 28th. I'm 25th. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Virgo. Oh, they're Virgos. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. all Virgos. So he is, of course, as you said, the younger one. Yeah, he's becoming a lot of, very energetic. He was, he is a little more sensitive, I would say. He's mama's okay. boy. Uh, I have daddy's girl. I'm total daddy's girl um, mm -hmm. and mama's boy. And But he's getting a little, his energy's coming up. His personality's coming <laughs> up. Yeah, he, he's a lot of the wise or he wants to do. And he, uh, he's the type of thing when you tell him to do something, he just looks at you and he just doesn't do it. He knows you, hears you. Yeah. And he just says, don't do that. He's just like, no. I'm going to do it. I'm like, these are the types of things. I'm like, our daughter's personality is more like mine, a little more personable, uh, energetic. And of course, I'm a little more emotional. She's a little more emotional. But my son is just, yeah, he's different is level. a different level. Um, and I think he's, it's sometimes I'm like, wow. But as you know, I mean, know yourself, the, the um, girls and boys, girls mature a little bit faster than the boys do yep yeah yep. so i think it's we're going to go through that a little bit um but it's fun it's fun it's a wild ride right yes yeah, so wild Especially ride this year fam this this year with our unprecedented uh pandemic that we're going through and we're still you know in um uh if you read different things and you know things go around but we're still in it you know people <laughs> think in the world i don't know but we're still in it <laughs> we're still living we're it. still living it because as we know as we, we have children in school 
We're yes. feeling it as yes. we have employees that uh, have to stay work at home because they're kids. We, we all feel it. It's, these are a lot of circumstances that are present. How do we, uh, it's a challenge ahead of us. How do we pivot? Sure. How do we move? How long? How do I evolve? think the unknowns, I think, makes people uneasy. You know, we can't put a time to it. We can't put a date to it, right? So of course. what does this look like? I think that's where a lot of people are getting anxious, you know, and anxiety is at an all time high and as this became because I was at the ERA conference. Actually, I just had Walter Tobin on yesterday. Oh, awesome. I did one with him because, as you know, they're going remote virtual this year. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going virtual. It was a big announcement yesterday, and I had him on for that. It was it was great. And he is, I really, on the podcast, if I, you'll watch, it'll be released actually tomorrow. I was going to uh, say it because I stalk you and yeah, I haven't yeah, yeah. seen it'll that one. It'll be tomorrow, and okay. it's coming out tomorrow. And uh, he's such, he's so good. And as he got the Walter Tobin Bridge Award, how you bridging manufacturers, distributors, and reps together. Um, mm. And it's it's so fascinating, but it was funny as he talked about, hey, yeah, we were, everything was great. We had an economist that came on, some people spoke, keynote speakers in, in the February, mm-hmm. Austin. Everything was great. Okay, how long is this pandemic going to last? How's it going to go? Everybody's like, oh, it'll be over. You know, it's in China, it's in Asia. There's some people right. here will be okay. That was February 28th. Two weeks later, the Boom. whole world shut down. Right, yeah, I remember whole, that. And everything shut down and, every, and as all of us and as we have operations in China, um, our Shenzhen office, mm-hmm. actually, our, it's funny, is our Shenzhen office shut down right before Chinese New Year. Oh, yep. And, and opened February 17th of 2000. Because it, and I can, We'll get into that is okay. how fast things changed. I'm like, yes. how did this happen? Because we're, we're, that office is not manufacturing. Manufacturing took a little bit of the two, three weeks longer to open up because of all the protocols. But yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. And they've been open since. And We've been um, challenged and going through all this here, and a lot of people are. Uh, the thing is, how to embrace the change and how to lean in and how to move. And just as you said, this is it. This is this what is I, it. This I is invested. What we're doing. I took all our trade show budget and everything and, and built a here. studio. And I, I love built it. A, I built a studio, um, yeah. and I tried to make it my own. And uh, at the end of the day, it's don't make it something you're not. Don't fake it. Make it your build your personality with. And as like what you're doing with your podcast is it's fun because I listened to the first two and it's oh no it's fun I that's, know. oh I you get know, like a you little know, people sh- and I, in the beginning I hated listening to myself yeah I hated like, recording I didn't want to listen to it just just, just release, release it release it and yeah but then I, you learn from it so now I'm more. Oh, I'm listening more the questions I asked, how we do it, and make it more interactive for the also listener okay. uh, as well and uh, having fun with it. Um, but because every, as I said, every guest is, mm-hmm. um, there's a different connection. Yeah. There's a I different feel connection. Connected. Yeah. <laughs> I feel really connected. Just yeah. be honest here. Yeah, you know? I am. It's, it's, because I think we have a lot in common and we're, f- it's fun. We're, um, and we're the, as I say, we are the new generation in the yes. industry that we're in. We're trying to create awareness and try to show and, um, and we, we take risks. Yes. We're taking risks. Yes. Yeah, we're risk takers and we try to do different things and make them work. And um, we are, I mean, the, as I said, I I am the X. Are you X? You're Generation X? Uh, well, I don't I'm 78. Even, I'm 78. Oh. See? see there it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we are X. So we're X? We're X. What's after X? Uh, millennials, it starts in 1980, which I don't believe now. I think millennials should start in 1990, but millennials starts in 1980. Uh, really? Yeah, 80 okay. is 80 and, uh, 80, uh, uh, to to 2000 is millennial. What was before Generation X? It's the boomers. It's our oh, parents. Oh, okay. Yeah, the boomers. Okay. So, um, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so it is. it goes millennials, and then it gets, I think it's now, it's um, Ys. <laughs> the Ys were be coming in, and it's, um, a, lot, a lot's changed because we weren't, we are, uh, you know, we were just teenagers when technology changed, and the internet yes. came around. You know, we started getting into teenage years, and well, I was younger. Cell phone beepers, fluorescent and technology fluorescent versus technologies. LED. You know, exactly. All the technologies changed. Our um, the millennials came in with technology already written. The internet, the internet was there, mm-hmm. and our kids are going to have even more powerful gadgets and widgets and IoT and everything's connected. They're teaching and coding right now to like four year olds. Yeah, it's all it's it's amazing because right? that's what they've seen that they teach numbers. It's, at the end of the day, it's a, it's mathematics. It's mm-hmm. all it's all uh, algor- I mean algorithms, mathematics, um, and it's you have to learn the codes to build. And it's funny when I was a kid in in two probably first or second grade, we were doing coding from the old PCs with the five yep. kilo KB disk drives mm-hmm. and the turtle game, you code it to where it go up or down <laughs> or left or right. And there was a code. I didn't know that was coding. <laughs> that was coding. That was coding. I didn't know. So, uh, but you know, let's take it back, you know, a little bit. Well, this has been great already. So 
Let's give a little history about yourself. Okay. You know, who is Sarah Kehoe? Oh, jeez. Where did you come from, your origins? You know, I'm really excited because I think there's a lot of stuff that we can connect with. But, For sure. You know, as you said, is uh, I think you formerly were from, uh, you were born in New York. Yeah, upstate New York. Okay. Apple country. Oh, apple country. Yep, yep. So I was born there um, in August 25th, 1978, and then grew up there until I was about, I don't know, I want to say like 10 years old. And then at that time, my mom was working for my granddad's company called Pace. Yeah. And he said, okay, you guys ready to move out to California? And I was like, absolutely not. I'm going to hate it, you know. Yeah. And then my mom's like, sign me up. Mm-hmm. So better weather. You know, the winters there are brutal, brutal. I, I know. I mean, that's, I'm not of what I've been born and raised. I mean, I've been we were raised here in Orange County, and I've okay. not, I only travel for vacation, or I go to the East Coast for. I like I like snow, I like cold, but yep. only to visit and to go sneak skiing or something. Because you can leave it, yeah, right? You don't have it. to deal yeah. with it. I have never been involved with. Uh, actually, I have. Well, uh, I've been involved with doing some roller. I've been when I'm visiting, you know, doing the shoveling or doing the roller till you get snow blower. You which were is shoveling for, snow. Yeah, I've done really? that. Really? Yeah, I, I had a great time. It was because it's a great experience. time shoveling yeah, snow. Yeah, because it's it was just as a fun one-time activity okay. it wasn't a thing that i had to do it every day to get my car out or things it was fun hey i'm gonna shovel snow before today. remote start before remote start and then yeah. i had the, the snow blower i'm all yeah i go in there do the snow blower i'm these getting a were, visual these were yeah these, these, were, right these were exciting times you know yeah. but then i'm like okay i left it and i've never done it again <laughs> so you know when you're the shovel's probably still there when you do it for the... years day over and, and you do it for probably three or four months of the year yeah. um it's i can tell you it gets really um it's challenging it is. So it was a great opportunity. My mom yeah. said, sure, let's go. And we moved yeah. to Laguna Niguel okay, and yeah. started out. And I started out school. And I was like, mom, she's like, how was your first day? Uh-huh. You know, and I'm like, I don't know. The kids have an accent. I don't have an accent, but the kids have an a- accent. They pronounce their A's a little bit different than us. It's like a stronger vowels and stuff like that, you know. So at first I was like, I don't know. I want to go back. So I'd t- yeah. I'd spend summers in New York. Um, to visit friends and family because I still have family there and stuff. So I, uh, after a while, though, each summer got less and less time spent there. Initially, I was like, the whole summer, sign me up, see you at the end of summer, mom. And yeah. then eventually, like, eh, I don't know about yeah. this. You know, it's humid, humidity. And then I started establishing my foundation yeah. here with my friends and stuff. And so I've transitioned very well. Yeah. <laughs> you became the SoCal girl. You know, I grew SoCal, up. Yeah. SoCal, SoCal HB, you I know, guess. I mean... Yeah. You are. I mean, as it says, is your hair, you got the blonde hair, you got it, you fit into that mold. The surfer girl coming to SoCal, you know, you fit into that. Oh my that, God, you know? I paddle like a wet cat. You do not want to see me but, on a surfboard. You know, but you, I mean, as we know, there's that stereotype. Of, yeah, you know, for you, sure. For well, sure. especially, you know, you go to Huntington Beach, you know, I grew up in Fountain Valley when I was okay, younger. Okay, right so next door. I, right next door, I rode mm-hmm. my bike to HB. I used to, you know, I grew up to Fountain Valley High School in my okay. freshman year, then I moved to Newport. But I have been beach, this has been bit by the beach though. So I, I know, you know, as I said, people said, I, I'm originally Iranian, but I was born and raised here. And people yep. look at me, it's like, oh, Iranians, you know, the stereotype of, you know, mm-hmm. materialism, we don't mm-hmm. like to do anything. But I was, mm-hmm. as we said, I like to get dirty, I like to have fun. And all my friends were, you know, I was a diversity. Yep. I was the diversity, my brown skin. I was, and that was the era. I mean, we're in 78 coming here. Um, I was the diversity. So it was, it was a little challenging, but I fit I in. I, I had to fit in, you know, and yeah. I fit in and I did a lot of, and I enjoyed what I did. But yeah, that's really, you know, but you coming here. So you came here in nine, 90, right? 92? Yeah. What? Um, all right. I graduated. Well, it's, well, now I'm dating myself online. Yeah, That's they, awesome. <laughs> but I graduated high school in 96. 96. I went to yeah. El Toro High School. Okay. Chargers. Oh, played huh. basketball. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. I was the number five or number four. So well, you had a, I mean, that you had agility. You had athleticism playing <laughs> basketball. You need to have, that's good. Well, like, yeah, you know, looking back, I, I like to shoot around a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting. All my kids play soccer. Okay. Soccer. Like, I use my hands, you know, sh- let's shoot, let's dribble. Yeah. Hey, you know, your mom had it going on back in the day. Do you <laughs> want to, like, do one-on-one with me? I can coach you. Nope. I want to play soccer. So, I have them all in soccer now. And then my husband rode dirt bikes, so the yeah. girls naturally, uh, two out of the three, the youngest hasn't started yet, but they ride dirt bikes too. Oh, awesome. Do you have the you have electric ones or you have the, you're have you getting them 50s? Oh, they're fuel injected, the fuel, like 110. Oh, again. Oh, okay. The, the eight-year-old Emma's on a 110. Oh, 110. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at this. Uh, yeah. Dad did kind of a bonehead move though. Uh-huh. So we just, it's fuel injected. You oh. need a key to start it, which is new, were, right? Uh-huh. So we get out to Paula, which is like, almost two hours from Huntington yeah. Beach. Yeah. 
we're all excited. We're all jazzed. We all woke up. And we're going as a family out yeah. to the track, and Emma's going to get on the bike, right? We get there. Jeff forgot the key. <laughs> That's something I would do. I have done this type of thing. I forgot something. I forgot the key or forgot to open. Yeah. It's the... The thing is, you know, I, I, I get into that, too. That, that's, oh, my I'm gosh. A bonehead, bonehead move that I would do myself. Ask me if I was calm. Ask me if yeah, I was calm. Yeah. I was calm. Yeah. I was proud of myself in that moment, you know. But I guess going back, so I played uh, ball in high school and then went to Irvine Valley okay. uh, for two years and then transferred over to Cal State Fullerton. So I'm pretty much a really – I know you can't tell, but I'm really stubborn in some ways. You know, I think Lauren, who I work closely with at the office, can attest to that yeah. um, at moments. But, you know, I acknowledge that. It's okay. Well, it builds your character. I mean, you're a leader yourself. You have to lead your team. You, and I'm st we all have our stubbornness, but that builds the character because you have to fight on. You have to go on. You have to – you know, you have to go – yeah. when, when the roof is falling, you have to hold it up and go, especially as a leader, as a mother, as everybody around you. You're yeah. an influencer, and you need to have that. And that stubbornness is what gives you the energy. That makes me keep, feel yeah. better. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> leading to my, my story is, so my mom said, here's the deal for college, right? Uh -huh. I moved out. Day I turned 18, I said, I'm independent. I want to move out. I love you, but I want to live with some girlfriends. My mom was like, okay, no problem. She said, I'll help you out with school, but I want to see your report card. Okay. And I was like, I'm 18. Like, I'm a young woman, right? Yeah. So I said, nope, not going to do that. I'm going to pay my own way through college. So I was very stubborn in that sense. So I went to community college because that's what I could afford, and then I worked at a sushi bar, Rock and Sushi. Right off of Sunset and uh, no, no, off Sunset, no, some Rock and Sushi. No, that was sushi. Lake Forest, was Lake but there Forest. is oh. one. There's a oh. very famous one um, awesome. in Hollywood as well. Oh, Rock and Sushi was in Lake Forest. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I totally mistaken. No, that was Sunset Sushi. I was, I was thinking one. There's so many. Yeah, so many. There's yeah, so yeah. many Rock and Sushis. Yeah. All everyone in the sushi world was rocking. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Um, because that was the big thing about that sushi was sushi the, was yeah, the big thing in yeah. the dollar and i knew that the dollar the the tickets for the sale of dinner and stuff was high so tip i could make higher. good yeah. commission or right. higher yeah. tips yeah. so yes. i was like i'm going down this route you know so i um yeah i paid my your way entrepreneur way college. was already there yeah <laughs> right? i was like <laughs> don't you want to upgrade a sashimi and get like 12 plates of that because it's not going to fill you up yeah. sold yeah, you know so uh, i did that and then transferred over to cal state fullerton and then got my bachelor's with my concentration in marketing, of all things. Yeah. And then uh, went to Costa Rica for a little bit. And then my granddad called me up and said, are you ready to come work for Pace? Mm -hmm. And I was in Costa Rica at the time. for I was there for about three months. And I said, oh, sign me up. I'll be home, you know, in the next few weeks. And then came back and gathered all my things and drove across the country in my car. Back to New York. Back to New York. Yeah. And I did training for like six or seven months there. Mm -hmm. And then he's like... You're a bird. You're free, right? Okay. I'm going to set you free. You're ready. Or actually, I kind of pushed it because it was winter time too, and it was uh, so. Let's, let's take cold. a step back. So Pace was is a manufacturer, correct? Pat, let, let's explain what Pace. Okay, did yeah, no yeah. problem. So my granddad, Pat Kehos, founded okay. uh, Pace Electronics in 1969. Okay. He was the first stocking distributor in the United States. Uh, he was going over to the Pacific Rim, and not everyone was doing that. And if anyone knows my grandfather, he's this really tall maybe 6'2 guy, strong presence, um, originally from Indiana, you know? Yeah. So you don't really, at that time, you didn't really see that overseas, you know? So he was sleeping on beds that were way too short. He was going on planes that had uh, chicken coops in the back of the plane. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was OG for yeah. sure. And so he met uh, someone by the name of Peter Yang and who is still today uh, – affiliated with Pace as well. And then they ventured over from the Pacific Rim to Taiwan. They started an office in Taipei okay. and then rode the wave to Hong Kong. And then from Hong Kong, opened up their own contract manufacturing facility in Hersan, China okay. in 96. Okay. Well, that was right. WT opened in 97, right? That was the tr transfer of Hong Kong. The, mm -hmm. the, the whole thing it happened. Was a that, was a, big that was a big deal. deal. That, 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 those couple of years were big milestones for Hong Kong and the China relationship. Huge. Yeah. And the interesting thing in yeah. which, I, you know, I learned a lot from my grandfather mm -hmm. over years. He's been a, a, the, the best mentor I could ever have. And he really, you know, he was on the forefront of the technology mm -hmm. on the wave of where to manufacture and when. And he just had that sense and he had that risk. He had that sense of risk of, yeah, let's, we're all in, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, he's still, like, he was the friends with the founders of Everlight and Nippon. And so all these relationships formed and at that time and still today, I think 
even as well is those relationships were so key. You know, they would come over and visit like my aunt, I have an Uncle Snake from Hong Kong. We call him oh, Uncle Snake, sick. okay? And he comes over to the U.S. and spend a lot of time. And then at that time when my granddad was alive, he would come over and they would spend time in California and make calls and collaborate. And it was a lot of fun. You know, we had a lot of good time and a lot of good memories. He started a race team. Um, wow. Derek Daly was his driver uh-huh. for Indy and then had a few other key drivers too um, in the 80s. And then my granddad or my grandma was like, how much does it cost for yeah, a tire? A, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to do that. So then yeah. he started doing some like sprint cars, okay. you know, and sponsored sprint cars up until the very end. So we really, as a family, would go to the racetrack. So he was very motorsport enthusiast. He was a very motor, he likes motorsports. Not dirt bikes, though. No, but he Not liked, two yeah, wheels road before. Racing, road racing, sure. motorsports. Okay, yeah, yeah, so he would have these teams and yeah. he got involved on the softball. He had a AAA softball team yeah. as well and always took the time to you know, give back to the community. And really he took in kids uh, during the summer for a summer program from kids from New York City to kind of show them upstate New York and just kind of work inside the office and help around the house and have that family time that maybe they don't have where they were living. So, um, yeah, so that's how Pace started. And then their headquarters is in upstate New York and so does New York. Uh, middle of nowhere, you know, over by the lakes mm-hmm. over there, and then uh, warehousing in New York, and then also California mm-hmm. as well. So, been doing a long time, and so he really utilized his uh, supply base for the component side. And then, as Sunbeam and other customers were coming to him, saying, "Hey, I need help with value add. What mm-hmm. can you do?" Um, he started Pace Technologies in Hersan, China, where they do the value add there. So. They're running about like 26 PCB insertion lines. They do SMT in-house, full integration, turnkey, final test. Uh, even the uh, plastic plastic enclosures, they have about 25 now that do up to 350 tons. So very vertically integrated. integrated. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I mean, we share a lot of similarities. Uh, as my father and this is things that my father started his business in going to uh, Asia, Taiwan, Hong Kong in the late 80s and 90s. Maybe they're on the same flight. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, well, funny thing is I've been to Pace Electronics about 15 years ago in China. Really? I visited them with my father. He okay. took me because we used to, that's just what we, how we built our, our business. Your supply base, right? Supply base is going to supply to customers, EMS, OEMs. And uh, that's how I learned is I went, first time I went to, I was just a kid when I went to Hong Kong. I was probably 90. Or, um, you know, I was still in school, all this. He was wanted to show me, took me to Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan. And then as I got, went to school, graduated, and started yep. going in, in the two early, probably 98, 99, I started going to more to China and Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And I started visiting, you know, we started visiting all the factories. So there used to be all, all the, uh, it went from Taiwan to Hong Kong, all yep. the manufacturing was there. And then as soon as WTO opened, they transferred to, to Shenzhen, that mm-hmm. low Wu area, then transferred to the Guangdong district. Yes. All yes. Guangdong district. Yes. All, and it was a farm town and mm-hmm. it just turned it. Today, it's a first world co- a city and a province. And um, there's a Starbucks there now. When I was going in there, it was dirt there's roads. Hundreds and of Starbucks there. So it's yeah. crazy. It's not even, star- it's, as you say, that's what the similarity is. I've seen it grow. I've seen the changes. Have you been there probably? Like the style When's the first of time? coffee? When's the first time you went to China? Oh, gosh. You know, it was after a few years after I started working for Pay. So let's say. Let- now you're really putting a timeline. So you went to, to Hong Kong first, obviously. Hong Kong, you went to Hong Kong. I spent some time in Hong Kong okay. and then uh, went over to China. And I want to say like 2004 time. 2004, okay, yeah. Time frame. That was just in the boom. Everything was starting. Yep. Right, everything was starting to build. And I just remember as far as, you know, my granddad telling me, just fight the first night. If you can fight the first night and stay up as long as you can, you'll yeah. be good for the rest of yeah, the, 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 the jet trip. lag. The, the jet, jet lag. lag. The jet lag is uh, keep flying. You know, it depends if you fly direct or stop. It's 15 to 20 hours, you know, depending. Depends how direct you, yeah, all direct, the way. Direct, you know, um, and it's, it's, it is, ch- but it's funny, I, I just put everything smaller, the size of the beds and the rooms and everything, especially in Hong Kong. Yes. The concrete jungle, everything is tiny. It's like, oh, there's a room? Yeah. What's, there's, the, the thing's like a bathroom size, you know? It's like, there's a bed <laughs> and there's the door. Yeah. And there's the little, you know? There's so not much action. There's not much know? action. No, but. Uh, but you know, do you remember like before the Starbucks in Guangdong province or Guangzhou and the different areas around it? Like the coffee situation. Oh yeah, there was, there was. Do you remember the rocket feel? Like basically, you could pour the cup over and it would still be like sliding out of the glass. They didn't. 
they, they weren't really coffee back. They have their because they're very tea. Yes, Chinese very are very tea oriented. Tea. But they try to accommodate us yes. by some instant coffee Correct. and things like they that. They try to do whatever because they, they were evolving as, of course, and trying to accommodate foreigners. Um, mm-hmm. And they're very hospitable. Don't get me wrong. They've always been very hospitable. They're family. I'm, you yeah. know, I feel that, um, like I, how I say it, Uncle Snake, yeah. like everyone at the factory is family. Yeah. I can call them at any time for help. Um, they can call me any time for help when uh, people... Uh, my friends from China come over here. You know, we as a family, we take all the kids and everyone, and we go to Universal Studios yeah. and Disneyland, and they go to my kids' soccer games and stuff. And my kids love it, and they love it, you know. Yeah. And uh, we just share funny stories. Peter's daughter, uh, Charlene, is very active within Peace Technologies okay. and kind of getting groomed, you know, as the next era. And so, and she has a little one as well. So we share like some mom stories, you know. And then when I go over there I get my mom fixed by seeing the little ones yeah. you know and then I don't miss my kids as much I always miss them and then I get them on the phone and then I hear the crying and stuff and I'm yeah, like I'm okay. good I'm good do a little know? FaceTime action or something going on okay I got, I got yeah you yeah know. I'm sad I'm sad because now. as you know I mean for myself when I go to Asia it's like 24 7 you're running it's everything's happening everything is constantly moving you're, yes you know, it's a hustle it's yes. the hustle of from factory side to vendor visits to qualifications to what we're doing. It's and they PPAPs, yeah, everything. Everything they're they're moving forward and it's like, oh, we start at six and it's already eight. I'm like, what the time go? We're gonna and have the dinner. Dedication. Oh, you yes. have dinner and the, dinner and then you come back and you yeah. reconvene. You know, a lot of I'll, I'll go over there with my project list, the mm-hmm. things that I want to accomplish or things to carry out. And a lot of times piggyback it with customer visits as well. So mm-hmm. you're right. You're just, you're running, you're going a million miles an hour. And the dedication from everyone over in China and around the world is just impeccable. I feel like. It's dedication, discipline. They're very, very disciplined. disciplined. And, yeah. they're, and one of the things is they're very hungry to learn. They're mm-hmm. very hungry to get knowledge. They're they're entrepreneur, very entrepreneur. They're all yeah. and uh, women. Uh, I just say because the women power is a big thing in China. A lot of women leaders. I've no. I mean, yes. a lot of women leaders. A lot of women and everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a street vendor or not. Everybody's trying to buy and sell something. Everybody's yeah. trying to hustle and bustle, <laughs> as you know, if you walk through the malls. And now it's very nice. You go to the modern, but you still have this loudspeakers and mm-hmm. the things trying to sell something. Like, what are they saying? <laughs> what are they selling? What is it? And the, and, and the conversing, and, and as you've probably experienced, you know, I've been to so many, like, their, their conversation sometimes feels like they're arguing, but they're not. No. They're, and it's like, Mm-mm. what's happened? Right. I, I, or I, hey, because you're trying to I, look, yeah. read body language. Because yeah. I don't, I can't speak Mandarin Correct. or Cantonese. Yeah. You know, so I'm trying to read the body language. Yeah, yeah. read the bo- body language, and I'm like, hey, is this what's going on? And I've gotten better at it. Where mm-hmm. I'd be like, that's a good moment. Uh, I, that's not a good moment. I, and it's funny, is as much as I can understand, but I'm terrible. Of, of I can't speak at all because I can't get the. Do you the, know beer? No. Peugeot. Peugeot. No. Way. No. You know, she, way. way. She, she, yeah. Yeah. Nihau, See, all the good don't, old things. don't, you she, know. She, you she, know she, but all of it, don't, but it's, I can understand it as we go sometimes when you're in a taxi, but it's like, I used to go there. I mean, I haven't, this is the longest I haven't traveled in 20 years um, to Asia. I used to be there probably spend, before I was married with kids, I was probably spend four to five months a, a year Agreed. in Asia Same region, here. China, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia. Just um, soaking everything so, up like a sponge. I would Oh, I was going to say people thing is a hustler. As my father did, he was the traveling salesman with the Samsonite, as he said. He said my first <laughs> podcast with my father, I learned a lot because I didn't know as much. To, he, oh, that's he's, uh, It was amazing. And he's like, yeah, I was a traveling man. I was the only foreigner um, in Hong Kong going from mm-hmm. factory to factory mm-hmm. with my case and trying to sell. Oh, and in every building, there was so many different factories. And yeah. they're all customers because he was a distributor. And yeah. he can sell a product. And he was an engineer, so he can look at a PC board and know what, the, what component they're buying. Oh, I can sell you this. I can sell you this. Yeah. So back then, because now the global distribution wasn't there, internet wasn't there. Everything right, changed exactly. in the nineties. Everything changed in the nineties. Everything was soon as the, everything got smaller. Um, but it's uh, but I I, f- I feel that I can really have um, uh, both of us share those experiences oh, of China, so of how many. it developed, and the traveling, and the cars, the, personal, the trains, and yeah. the the food, the food, the and hot the, pot. The food is oh, the Sichuan, uh, the help, but it's on fire. I'm crying. I'm eating my food. I'm like, what is this? And then it's sometimes the stomach doesn't, the next day it's not such a good day, but, uh, you know, and the beer and the, you know, and the, I can fire water, the fire oh, there. Yeah. It's basically fire water. It's basically pure feel like it's like alcohol. Yeah. You're yeah. drinking. It's the rice wine. Yes. The rice wine. I feel the, like my, yeah. 
they say, come pie, you know, and then I feel my face just turning red instantly, you know, and I'm like, oh no, I've got so much. And they chase it with beer. You know, it's not like you have a wide, oh, here, here's a shot of this and here's some beer to chase it down. And it's, it's, uh, but I mean, it's, it's so funny. You you experienced that. And as I say, KTV, (laughs) that's all entertainment was. What is your song? What is your song? I don't even know. I went through. I started going to like Journey or it's like to stinking. Okay. I've sung Britney Spears before. Really? I've sang Baby Michael one more Jackson. Time? Yeah. Well, I, I used to be a Britney Spears fan back in my early 20s. Okay. I probably went to three of her concerts. I don't know. I was just, I was a little, you know, that was obsessed, obsessed with her a little bit. But I <laughs> love it. You know, it was fun. But I, you know, that era, you know, but it was fun. But I, it, but we've done, because uh, especially you start drinking there, everything yeah. is a drink, everything. And Liar dies. it's fun. You know, that's how you build a relationship. That's how yes. they build, they bond. Everything is personable. You eat dinner with them, you go out to KTV. And that relationship, I mean, we have the same thing here, but just a different culture. We have a different yes. culture in the US. Yes. Over there, the culture was very hospitable. Come in and then let's go out and eat dinner and drink together. Mm-hmm. And that's how they get to know you. Yes. That's and how, and yeah. taking the time, taking you the know, time, yeah. I think sometimes here we're, we, there's, we're wearing so many different hats and at the end of the day, everyone wants to go home to their family and get whatever they need to get done, done. And you've lost some of those as far as a lot of people don't have the time or they don't want to go out to dinner as much or to have those lunch meetings as much. Definitely not a martini at lunch. Yes. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, I, I totally agree. It depends what industry you're in. I think if you're on Wall Street, it's a different situation. Mm-hmm. You're working on that. Different mm-hmm. different industries, different the ways they, uh, the culture that they have. But For in sure. Asia, it's very common to have lunches and, and dinners and drink with them and go through it. And, and the culture there is, you know, as we call it here, work-life balance. There it's a work life balance. Those guys no. were the families are at home. They see their kids maybe at night on the morning, but they, on the weekends, you know, and the weekends are, but they're they work. They work 14, 16 hours a day. They try yeah. to find a solution. They everything is hustle and bustle. We'll figure it out. We'll yep. figure it out. And by morning, when you wake up and you look at your inbox, it's they figured it they out. Figured and you're, it out. I just have been on some call. I don't know. Like, yeah. how are we going to do this, Sarah? Don't worry. Don't worry. We've got this. You got to trust us. Yeah. And I'm like. Okay, don't lose seat, sleep, get rest, you know. Um, they're very big on that. Sarah, you, you need some rest. And so I'm like, okay. And then I wake up and poof, it's like Christmas in my inbox. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like this you got it all. Poster, There's a solution. Right? They know how to scale. I mean, that... I think uh, let's just, we've we've shared that experience of traveling so much to China or to Asia in general. We understand mm-hmm. a lot of people who haven't or haven't spent so much time don't understand the power and the culture and discipline that they can find solution. They're critical and think... They, of course, there is a lot of the politics involved, but set yeah, that aside. Set it aside. Set it aside. They are just driven, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I, when I go there and I feel my, my team, they just want to learn and they love to listen. They love, even though our, you know, I, I, we, we speak English in the office, make sure, but still, it's a second language. There's lots in translation happens. And I speak fast and I have to slow down because mm-hmm. um, I get excited and I get excited. You yeah. get excited? <laughs> I get excited? No way. I get excited. Hey, I, we have something in common as well, you know, getting excited. Uh, we need to, you know, what would be a great idea when, when travel restrictions and stuff. And, and once we get through the situation with COVID and the hard times right now, we should, we should meet up in Shenzhen area. We have a Shenzhen well, office as yeah, well. We're Futian, our office is in Futian. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Office uh, Futian. I know the, I know the whole area. So it's like, it's like my And we should home. connect them and connect, we'll connect the teams. The and team, connect, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It could be great. I have, I would, I would love to. And it, as you say, going back to that connecting peoples, I met mm-hmm. so many friends out there and a lot of expats from in industry in Hong Kong and in Guangzhou. There's a lot yeah. of, and I met a big, because a lot of trading happens and a lot yeah. of expat community there with Indians, there's Europeans, Syrians, Russians. Every- and sometimes when I went out to Guangzhou to a bar or restaurant, uh-huh. it doesn't feel like I'm with China. I'm like, the servers are Chinese, but everybody else is a foreigner. I'm like, yes. where am I? I'm like, this is a feel. <laughs> or those clubs like that, because Guangzhou has, is very heavily expat. It's always, I would say, Futian and Shenzhen. There's a lot mm-hmm. more Shenzhen, of that. Yeah. Shenzhen in general. But Guangzhou was like, in, and it's funny, some of my first meeting or some of the things while traveling in Shenzhen, I would bring my friend who was, he lived there. He was in trading, trading business. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were doing textiles and doing appliances, selling, exporting to, to Africa and stuff. So 
we had that, but I was taking the meetings with me. It's like, how do you do this? It's like, you're just talking to these people in Chinese. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, they don't <laughs> understand what's going on. I don't talk to them. They just, we do hand signals. Yeah, it's we a write lot it of down. this, this, you this, know, this, yeah. and this. Hand and signals, and you get it across, and the price, uh -huh. this is it. Can you give me this price? <laughs> okay, we did negotiate. Thank you. Hey, you never discuss price at yeah. the factory. <laughs> yeah, they give us this price and the terms of what we're going to do and, you know, the price. Oh, you know. man. Well, you know, my first time going over to China, one of my first times I got uh, an order from Hopkins Manufacturer. They do the trailer connectors okay. and things like that. And it, it was bare boards. So okay. I sold them bare boards and it was my oh. first sizable package. And so then um, my granddad said, you need to go to China. We're not getting the delivery dates because it was right before Chinese New Year. You need to hop on a plane so and you go can't to the factory. go to the factory, yeah. figure it out with Mr. Sue, and uh -huh. you can't come back until you get the dates that you want. Yeah. I had an open ticket, yeah. okay? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So then got flew out of LAX straight to Guangzhou uh -huh. and then started the negotiations. And, you know, it was a lot of negotiations and a lot of, I don't know, I know, I don't know. And then the, the last day of when I was thinking I was yeah. going to leave, I, miraculously I got the pricing and delivery that I needed to get. Well, we... Exactly. I mean, step back. I mean, you, you have a presence. You would have, I mean, I want to think about this, but yourself as a presence going to China. Yes. I mean, you don't blend in. I, I, I don't blend <laughs> as much, but yourself, if you feel, I mean, I, I've been to a lot of uh, the Chinese men, especially enamored by, you know, a woman with blonde <laughs> yeah. hair coming there. Like, and, and, and of course, because you're, you're a leader, you're powerful because mm -hmm. you know what you want. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, uh, how, how was that? How was that feeling? You know, what, what did you feel when you went there? as uh, by yourself or with a with, uh, counterpart? You know, I was honored. I felt okay. like when going over there, I'm a relationship person. Okay. So I'd get so much done in person and I like to know what's going on at the factory and then answer questions and really get to know people as a person and work together. You collaborate on these projects for years, some even longer than my firstborn, you know? And so you really connect with people in that way. So it's it was so important for me to go over there and at that time, you know, they were looking, you play basketball? Then I got to yeah. film in on my wonderful yeah. basketball career, you know? And then, um, yeah, you know, everyone was just felt so blessed that I came over. But at the same time, I was so fortunate to meet with everyone mm -hmm. and to have the hospitality. Like, we would go swimming in the Hong Kong Ocean, yeah, you know? Yeah. I'd see my containers go across, you know, practically by me, you know, or go on fishing trips and go to the mountains and everyone would just go out of their way to make sure that I had a, 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 a whole level view of, of the picture over there, yeah. you know, aside from the manufacturing and stuff, but just a great experience. experience. And so they're, as I said, they're very hospital, take care, drive you around, pick you up, what yeah. do you need, they were, you know? And they, but honestly, they were always trying to slow me down. And I'm like, <laughs> no, like, no, I say, have to. They have say this. you want to rest, Sarah. You need to rest. Yeah, because for me, they always say you work too. Just rest. Just yeah. if you want to pick up later, I'm like, no, no. I am here to work. <laughs> and, and you know what I said to that? Yeah. No, I'm not resting. I'm staying at the factory, yeah. so I have a room at the factory, so I don't go back and forth to the hotels and stuff. So I say I the stay. dormitory is basically they have yeah. dormitories there mm -hmm. for dormitory. management. Yeah. Has a level, so yeah. I stay on that level. And uh, last time I went there, they still had my clothes from like the original I, the original time wow. I went. I mean, I'm sure they fit, but they looked a little bit small you know three kids later yeah. but um yeah I just I was there to work they work hard and you want to put in that effort with them and really collaborate and make the most of that time so I would say they would always try to slow me down a little bit and I was always trying to squeeze some more stuff in yeah I mean because as I said there's I when I travel out there there's a purpose I usually don't try to you know I I I don't do a lot of sightseeing only weekends I might do but I'm yeah. there for a purpose I work yeah. you know I'm even there for two three weeks I'm there we're doing the days. We're starting out early till night because we, we want to get things done. And I come home, and when I come home, sometimes Gosh. everything slows down. Yeah. I, I kind of come home, everything happened. Why is everybody? I'm like, everybody's sleeping at 435. <laughs> Stop. I'm like, nobody, what's going on here? I'm like, but the culture is different. You know, sometimes I'm like, but I come back with energy. I come back, we're getting Super this going. Super energized, right? Energized. Yeah. And that's one thing for me that I miss is I miss the interaction and I miss, I haven't traveled there since, uh, actually the last place I went to was in India in February. Okay. Um, but, but Oh wow. So that was close. That was right. February. I was in India, February 5th. Okay. Um, that's when I had to sign the letter for our office to get audited in Shenzhen and PPP and all that stuff. And okay. 
uh, cause we have a China limited company as well. So we can do local R and B business. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, they had that process had to go through, but that's what I remember. Cause I have a video of me signing this letter. I'm like, that's the day people always say, Oh yeah. How was it when you were pandemic? Well, I wasn't, I was in India. I was in Bangalore in my office, in Bangalore. I'm like, yeah. My VP in China says, okay, you need to sign this for us to open the office. And they'll come audit, the, the government agency will come audit. I'm like, they're going to come audit us? I'm like, with thousands, I'm like, how are they figuring this out? They're going to come, <laughs> we're a small potato in this. In this. <laughs> right? Yeah. To a week later, they showed up at our office. Wow. They audited us. We had PPE, thermometers, all the stuff. And the, that was the 14th, 17th we opened because okay. they approved us to open. Um, and yeah, I'm like, Tiny. wow, t- how three, within three weeks, this was all... Um, but yeah, of course, we had some staff stuck uh, stuff in Hunan. They couldn't come back took until probably in the March they came okay. back because they had to go through the. I don't know if you've experienced that with some of your team out there. Yeah, the factory they're stuck. They had to go through checkpoints, protocols. They had it's like going through borders. Like they have to. Yeah. Um, and but those ha- factories yeah. that had fl- that went through swine flu and other 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 situations like that, it was easier for them to come back live. I think because they already had those uh, procedures and policies set in place, right? They have precedences. They've been through it before. They've mm-hmm. had in the last twenty years. I think they have three. Epi- they have epidemics. They have a three epidemics that yeah. happened through that through the, the swine flu, the H one N one. I mean, all the stuff that came all through, um, and they had experience of how to do it. You know, as I said. At the end of the day, you know, I look back and say at the beginning of this, you saw how China moved and how they can move actual mountains or build a hospital within two weeks. Oh, incredible. It's fascinating. And, um, you know, we aren't the fastest here. There's a lot of regulations that we all have here that you can't do that here. This doesn't happen. No. And some advice that my friends over in China gave me, they said, Sarah, you need to be careful because when the pandemic first started and things started flowing through on how you can get it and and the different things of how COVID was getting widespread. Um, Ashley over in our China office was like, be careful of the gas pumps. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's like, we were talking about some stuff and she's all really focused on that because think of how many people use a gas pump and touch it with their bare hands and then touch their face. or my kids pick their nose and then eat it, you know, things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I mean, the whole pandemic, it was, you know, my, my wife is half Chinese. Her, it's just random. I told myself, you know, it's just random. I'm like, I travel there so much. I don't want to be the, my wife is half Chinese, half French Lebanese. Okay. She was, she was uh, born here, raised, uh, she was born in Paris and then she was raised here. Okay. Um, but her mom's side's from Hong Kong, which is just, it's, 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 it's random. So we were, you know, all this thing was happening and we were going to, for Chinese New Year to her mom's house in LA and, um, and this whole thing was happening. I'm like, okay babe, what do we do? You know, this is all happening. I'm like, right. Let's, uh, I went on Amazon and I bought, I bought $300 with a mask before this whole thing happened. And I bought all these masks and I bought all this type of, um, sanitizer. So everything we, ha- we were prepared. Okay. Two weeks later, everything's shortages, right? Right. Everybody Toilet says, where'd you get it from? I'm like, you know what? Uh, my office was going through this. I signed a paper February. You know, these things you I knew. knew, I knew a little bit, uh, I've asked because you know what's going on there. So my team over there would give me, okay, you can do this. And I Inside. did, I did, this local Home Depot here, I did buy a thousand masks and shipped them to my Hong Kong office because Hong Kong had a shortage of masks okay. too. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of this mask was a big deal because they're they're very their culture is very easy to wear masks. They usually yes. do it when they're sick or have a cold. They're yep. very they're very as I said to me they're um, they they, were, they have a lot of respect for each other and they don't want to get each other sick. So even though I mean I travel there a lot, it's like half my two or three people always wear a mask. I'm like, why yeah. are you wearing a mask? I was like, because I have a cold. I'm like, you know, so it's very respectful. They, they yes. understand that and they're very used to it. So mask wearing for them was very easy. And they, tra- as you know, they travel on trains. There's thousands of people mm-hmm. in a train. MRT, they have beautiful trains, logistic systems now, but their public transport, there's millions of people transporting every day. Oh, and they're right. like this. They're, they're packed in like packed sardines. In sardines. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing how, you know, they controlled it. And I, I, I look up to them on some things of scaling manufacturing, what they can do is a lot of things mm-hmm. that we can all learn from a lot of things I don't agree on, but a lot of things I do agree on that. I think the total, we can learn from a lot. So I sure. learned a lot from them from manufacturing, mm-hmm. how to scale mm-hmm. other discipline. It gives me admiration of how everything works. And I think probably you, a lot of your skill set you learned in China, <laughs> you learned yeah. a skill set, you learned your discipline, you learned products, you probably the manufacturing, which now brings me back to, Mm-hmm. Kehoe Electronics and okay. your so career. So we're phasing out of Sarah and we're going into yeah. Kehoe, yeah, right? Yeah, going to Kehoe because we've gone over all the electronics industry. Um, yep. I think you've had some stints in other, uh, I don't know if it's because per, well, I've been researching you. Oh, so you're you've stalking had, me you too. You have stalking you too, <laughs> um, but you had different companies that I don't know you're, you're repping with or you're working with yep. or how did that work? How was your, your resume? The transition. Transition, how did that for work? For sure. You know, I worked for Pace from 2004 up until two months before my first born, okay. you know, and 
I don't know, you can maybe talk about on the air, off the air, a little bit of both, but uh, working with family has its challenges. Um, And we had different viewpoints. My granddad's a little bit more old school and I have a different way of maybe thinking or, or processes and it's never easy, too easy working for family. And this isn't something that's easy for me to share, you yeah, know, because yeah. it was a very personal thing because we're related, right? And I grew up with pace in my blood. And so when uh, some situations came about, um, and I haven't really shared it with too many people, but it was just best, I mean, okay, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest, okay? okay? Um, my grand, we weren't seeing eye to eye on a few things, and I was ready to get, have a baby, and it was hard for me to travel to New York. So he came out on this plane mm-hmm. with his pilot and um, said, you know what, I think it's good for you to represent Pace and um, start a manufacturing firm, but not directly. And then, and then walked out. That's hard. Right. And, you know, it's something that makes me feel vulnerable to share because, you know, will people look at me a certain way, but, you know, I'm to the age and I think that there's more people that can relate to similar experiences (laughs) (laughs) yes 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 so you know it was not easy Uh, and I just remember bawling my eyes out to be honest going what's going on but now I'm so thankful to be in the position that I am where I still get to have that relationship with Pace it's still family run and um and I I spun off and I started Kehoe Electronics and I was able to diversify in different industries like medical device space and things like that and I really grew and came into my own. So, and then initially, right before having a baby, I was just totally out of sorts for maybe a day. And I remember going to California Pizza Kitchen because I was very pregnant and sitting down with Jeff and going, this is what I'm thinking. I want to start a rep firm. And there are some companies that are headhunting me and this is what I want to do. Can you support me? Because I don't know. I, I have a good feeling about this, but I don't know, you know, what the outcome initially is going to be. And we're just having a baby. There's a big risk. There's a risk in everything. And I, I, I empathize with you because it is. I mean, you were heartbroken. It's like breaking up. You're heartbroken. Yep. Being pregnant, having almost a firstborn. I'm, I can empathize that what you were feeling and um, but persevering through it, making a decision uh, calculated decision working with your husband and saying, hey, I'm going to take this risk because it is. Everything is a risk. That risk yes. and reward comes in. And that as an entrepreneur or as a leader yourself, it takes that, you know, those decision making and, okay, we're going to do. Sometimes there's a, you know, crazy idea and a lot of my crazy ideas come like that and like and they become successful. A lot of more, cal- sometimes calculated stuff yes. fails more than the, 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 than the, 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 off the way of natural organic, organic. path. And you had a vision, I think, because uh, you had a vision. So, you started from there. So that was 2012. Um, 2012. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Emma was born in May. So it was a few months prior to that. So I got everything sorted out and started my LLC S Corp. Mm-hmm. And then away we went and I never looked back, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's been a remarkable journey that I wouldn't change for anything. You know, I think looking back, honestly, I feel like my grand and I, would we have maybe changed the way that we went about a few things when we were talking with each other and having these discussions? 100%. Sure. But, you know, I know that, you know, he passed away shortly a few months after Emma was born that he's looking down going, you're kicking ass, you know. So um, that is something that is dear to my heart. You should be very proud, proud of you and proud of what you've done. And um, I think as a thing, he he mentored you through choice and putting you in tough situations, especially in the industry of traveling, manufacturing, learning the ins and outs, because it's hard to be very successful in what you do and listen, you know how everything works. And I think you had that foundation, which he did put you in in indirectly. And you said, just threw you in the fire, right? Figure it out. And he gave you that pathway. Of course, politics and families happens. I've been through it. Yeah. A lot of that stuff, emotion, someone says something about you, this, and you take it very hard. Um, but that thing is how you rise up, Yes. how you move forward and how we persevere through it. Um, using the, the knowledge that we've learned yeah. and mo- you know, basically monetizing it. Why, why am I putting it to work? For sure. You yeah. know, I grew up with it. Our Thanksgiving dinners were discussing manufacturing and, mm-hmm. you know, our family dynamic was very unique and it was very fun and it was very challenging at the same time. And no one was harder on me than my granddad and my mom was involved with the business at the time too. So, but what great mentors, you know, yeah. to help pave the way and the people that I mentor today, like Sarah Legier and Lauren are like, I'm so thankful, you know, because 
your approach to this is amazing and just to have you as a mentor and that really touched me because yeah. you know when I was living in it I was just living through it and navigating yeah. through it you know and so I'm so happy you know where we are where I am personally with Pace and then also you know with Kehoe Electronics as well so I picked up a handful of manufacturers at that time HMI there was a big shift you know going on with HMI HMIs, yeah. before yeah. all the apps on your phone yeah. and stuff you know so I uh, reached out and to the people that were kind of trying to connect with me and then I added Hantronics Displays and Valmark uh, Industries that's owned by NEDAC as well and they do H they do HMI as far as the membrane switches the overlays control panel assemblies or IC ISO 13485 okay um, displays touch they do the touch screens for the displays as well loca bonding uh, down in Monterey Mexico so I got to learn some more culture through Mexico as so well. Cool. So, so tra- yeah, local. I mean, it's not, it's not far away here. It's like our neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, our neighbor. yeah, yeah. Tijuana, Ensenada. Yeah. You know, uh, Fender Guitars was one of my first mm-hmm. customers oh, with cool. Pace. So I would drive uh, every few weeks to Ensenada. Well, Ensenada's fun anyways to visit the food, and, the, you know, but the factories is different But getting story. lost oh, in getting Ensenada lost. Oh, is okay. not fun. And back then probably, oh, well, GPS, well, it's still there. Well, now I'm yeah. dating myself again, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> the GPS was there, but no, I, it was there. Actually, 2000, no, it was there. Everything no, was there. Yeah, we were, I don't know. I, I just remember, yeah, I remember using MapQuest, MapQuest to print out yeah. directions. And the directions <laughs> on the left and right, yeah. I mean, I used to, go, it's funny, Ensenada, because I used to go down there. I was an off-road guy. The Baja 500 is always down okay. there. So I used to, uh, my friends are in motorsports racing and they all, I used to go down there a lot. So I know it very well. Of course, the Tijuana, there's all the manufacturing. Maquila Doris is yes. down there in Tijuana. Mm-hmm. There is an Ensenada, Rosarito, some of them. I mean, mm-hmm. they're all over the place. They're spread out to different parks, you know, I mean, all on the border. I mean, so the, the opportunity is there. And you've, as I, you've experienced going to Asia, yep. you know how it works going to factory. So when you walk in, you feel different okay, culture, different culture, you know? but mm-hmm. you understand but very family oriented as yes. well, you know, yeah. so I would get invited to customers, um, birthday parties yeah. and weddings and yeah. all sorts of things. And that, the, and you know, it was a great experience. I'll never forget. And I'm still friends with everyone today. Yeah. So it's been great to travel all around the world, to be honest. So when uh, I was doing, doing more integration with Valmark, it was a great opportunity. Yeah. And especially med device, there's so much in our backyard, you Correct. know, San Diego, Orange yes. County, uh, LA as mm-hmm. well. So it was a great opportunity. And then I added some other lines as well. So power supplies with Emperor and okay. LED drivers. And then, um, yeah, I got some like, more exciting things to come in, come. coming in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look, we got most, but so you, I, I, I would say most of your thing is most electromechanical, the hardware side, um, and it, you didn't, and now you're getting to power supply or the finished good. It was a supply. lot of like electronics, electronics yeah, for sure. Know, connectors, and you can connectors, power, because mm-hmm. I also boards, you know, your boards, PCBs, PCBs, PCB, everything that populates onto yeah, the boards, boards, yeah, things like that, mm-hmm. enclosures, me- okay. metal fab, maybe for right manufacturing okay. out of San Diego. And you had night deck for fans. Did you have to use the fan side or what do you sell for night deck? Uh, Which motors, motor? oh, so yeah, the motors, the Hearst okay, motors. motors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. uh, and that, at that time, it I just recently signed with NEDAC Motors. Okay. Um, but Valmark is part of NEDAC, so that's okay. how I started that relationship. But um, now I'm I'm starting to build out electromechanical division. Yeah. So with Ada fans, mm-hmm. uh, NEDAC motors, and adding some encoders, uh, Dyqua gearboxes, and doing more on that side as well. So that's something that I strategized um, right before COVID. Yeah. So Perfect I mean, timing. Which is a, brings me to a good question: Is a lot of these companies um, have uh, supply chain or production in China? Yes. So mm-hmm. how um, how is that affecting your business from the supply chain? Because I, as a rep, you know, you're, you're basically rep and the factory does all the order processing, correct? Is that how you're working? Yep. Right, yep. right. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So I'm not, I'm not placing, so I don't have a software program set up okay. where I'm entering orders. That's yeah. all done Pass from through. the sales. So Passes through exactly. to, the, to the sales, mm-hmm. to the distributor or to the manufacturer. To the correct? manufacturer. Yeah, to mm-hmm. the manufacturer. So that gets that. So how has that been with current projects that are ongoing with uh the pandemic tariffs, all the stuff that's oh, been in place. Oh, it's fun. You know, how, how, I mean, how are you oh, uh, going, getting through all this? It's so seamless. Yeah. Just yes. <laughs> I'm like, I was going to rather, uh, do you know I was waiting for you to call I'm me like, out I'm on like, that. Do you know something that I don't know? Maybe I should come over there and check out what's going on. The seamless. I mean, it's been, I mean, it's oh funny. It started God. from 2018 and, and it's just every year is a new surprise. 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 Yeah. You know, um, between that. So it's been challenging yes, okay. for sure. You know, I feel like, especially with, with, you have Chinese New Year and then you rocked into COVID, you know, the height of COVID over mm-hmm. in China. And then um, just, it was slow. You weren't at a hundred percent capacity mm-hmm. at the factories and slowly ramping up. So people are part-time, 
prior, can you say prior, the word? prioritizing? Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, orders and things. And so we're all yeah. like sales trying to just yeah. get all. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta focus on our customers, you know. And right. gr- thankfully, with my, of course, my relationship with Pace and other manufacturers, yeah. you, you know, I have that visibility, which I think is unique as well, you know. But um, yeah, it's challenging, even down to today, the logistics, trying to get the freight and trying to get it over here, uh, air, boat, like the container shipments. That's another logistics is because, in my opinion, they they cut they cut the capacity. And now there's not a lot of stuff going back. So the containers, so limits that, raises the prices. Airlines, commercials not flying. So people don't realize yeah. a lot of those those commercial flights had a lot of um, logistical. Yes. They use, you know, a lot of brokers, FedEx, they use these planes. Mm-hmm. And when you're stopped flying from U.S. to China to Asia, you're limiting, you're limiting all the things. So UPS and, of course, FedEx, got, we had contract price, everything. Everything got, oh, sorry, everything's FedEx overnight for air. Right. All our prices have been inflated, not just the tariffs we're dealing with. We're dealing with 23% of cost in, in logistics costs going up. So mm-hmm. it's like a double negative. Everything is going up. And how do we overcome it? How do yes. we pass it? Mitigate through, it. Mitigate it. Go through the challenges and lead times. How do yeah. I get the parts? You know, everything. Of course, if you're in medical device, you know, it was the first Q1, Q2, or Q2 special. was crazy. Everybody wanted deliveries. It was wild. Yeah. You know, Massimo and some of my other customers, the, the volume that we were having, you know, for the patient monitoring systems was unbelievable yeah. with my med device and just in their life-saving devices. Yeah. So you're working feverishly to get what to get that product in in, in the time that need they need it in order right. for the hospitals Correct. and for the different avenues and channels to go Correct. through. You know? So um med device was crazy for me. Lighting was down a little bit. You know, we do a lot in the lighting fixture world as far as exit emergency lights go, LED drivers for your drivers, okay. linear fixtures and things like that. And so um lighting was down, but we're starting to see it turn around and come back up again, you know, but it's just a wild time and I feel like we're getting a lot of inquiries and RFQs right now. I think people are starting to not put all their eggs in one basket with um, one manufacturer in and out of China. Uh, uh, yeah, they want to add the AVL. They want to um, they want to allo- have the allocation and see where they can get manufacturers all over the world. I mean, it's it's funny. Bring back to Mexico is, of course, a lot of I have a, we have a lot of customer or a lot of factories we deal with have moved a lot of production or from Europe and even from China to Mexico. Yes. The challenge uh-huh. is, is still 50, 60% of the supply chain comes from China. Right. So your raw material. Your raw material is there because right. Mexico still has a lack of s- local supply chain. And pe- mm-hmm. people don't realize when you set up a factory or EMS or an OEM, usually there's local, there's local vendors that can give you metal, sheet metal, screws, the strategy. nuts, the strategy. You, you build it. And when more people come in, they're going to take that capacity. So there's right. less capacity and you need to get it from somewhere. And the U.S. doesn't make a lot of stuff. So they have to go back to China. And that's where majority of all the indirect materials, because the semiconductors isn't enough, it, it can go from somewhere. Agreed. But the indirect materials come from China. Agree. And uh, and it's funny. I try to explain that to people. It's like, oh, they, they just can't move a factory from one country to another country and not affect the supply chain. Well, look at what happened to Vietnam. You know, I feel like a lot of people when tariffs came into effect, okay, we're Mm -hmm. going to come up with a plan and we're going to move manufacturing down to Vietnam. In an industry, whether it's industrial, med device, or maybe more of the, oh, you know, the more integrated and detailed level bombs that you're looking at to pull that off, I think out of Vietnam is very challenging. And they, I, I, I personally feel, I think this is, okay to say is that the infrastructure wasn't there set up for this huge wave of people trying to move you know fixtures and equipment in in the lack of labor in yeah. vietnam well the skilled labor i mean there is labor the problem is the skilled yeah they know um there's a lot of um there's also protests a lot of stuff with wage and a lot of mm-hmm. unrest politically but you know i spent a lot of time we set an office up there a few years back i went okay. to hanoi ho chi minh i could see all of it going off they've it's funny is back in 2000 before the the recession we went through there was a lot of um uh, investment with singaporeans and koreans and mm-hmm. japanese in vietnam they built out these massive um uh, industrial zones they're just graded them out built them for factories and when you go there you can see they're, they're developed but there's no fat building on it yet there's yeah. there's some few buildings but that's because everything slowed down the recession stopped everything and there's a kind of res- there's a resurgence but just like you said mm-hmm. there's no local supply chain um we have a couple big customers down there that uh, they moved they, they've been set up there for 10 years now, but now they just moved all their products, but all the products and supply chain still comes from China to Hong Kong. And we have to ship, we ship everything to Vietnam, but it's turnkey. There's still no local suppliers to make transformers, to make the shielding, to make the screws. 
yeah. the, the, even the chemicals. Right. The people don't realize there's a lot of chemicals go into manufacturing. They still have to import everything. Right. So that causes logistical challenges. It causes these and the skill to learn how to build the product. But of course, for tariffs, they can just, it's easy to, or if you can balance that out, move all the projects that are sent to, to, eight, to, to U.S. to Vietnam, and then you avoid the tariffs. But you know what area I found in Vietnam to be a good area as far as for um, PACE is solar panels. Solar panel, okay. Mm -hmm, to alleviate the, um, what is it, uh, an astronomical percentage in tariffs for solar panels. Solar panels, China. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, there's a massive solar panel. I think also Malaysia. Yes. Malaysia has a lot. Penang, uh, KL, um, JV, Johor Bahru, which was next to Singapore. I mean, those, I know all those areas very well because we have offices and team. I visit a lot of factories. Because yeah. Malaysia was an easy place when this tariffs hit. Malaysia was an easy place to have redundancy of manufacturing for a lot of these tier one or tier two manufacturers. Right. They just moved stuff for Jables and Flex. Same. Okay, we have facility. We just move products there. And supply chain could be supply because people don't realize it's, it's regional based. Hong Kong. So, controls China and China and yep. Singapore controls all Southeast Asia. That's where right. all the headquarters supply chain. And because uh, it's re regional based, you know, and uh, people don't realize they have, they have to switch. But the challenge was a lot of these guys are moving like, okay, our pricing structure is different from China than it is to there. So how do we get products? Mm -hmm. And how do, you know, these are, there's so many different variables of changing. And there's politics, politics in Malaysia too. Oh, now Pace has some presence in Malaysia now okay. setting up as far as doing some exit what, what area? You know, it's so fairly new. I think once they send out the press release, okay. I can kind of give you okay. some information on that. You know, yeah. I think, oops, I think it was a little bit of a secret oh, that okay, they're okay. waiting to share. But um, once we have that information that I can freely share with you for sure. No, I mean, a lot of companies like VTech, if you know VTech's a big manufacturer, they make all the toys, phones yeah. and stuff. And they make their also contract manufacturer for um, a lot of the tier on Harman cart, which one's stuff by Samsung now. Mm -hmm. um, they just, they bought a factory and um, they just bought Pioneer, which was in, in, J in uh, Penang and they mm -hmm. set up shop and they moved all of it there. So a lot of our products that we're selling to actually to QSC Audio get oh, okay. built over there, you know, okay. so uh, now because they used to be in China. Um, but it's, 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 it's fascinating because when you travel there, you understand it. And when, mm -hmm. you, when you're in the States, even as a rep, but I think you fair, you know the whole 360 solution. So mm -hmm. your your success, the keyhole of going forward as a rep, you understand all the ins and outs. Yeah, I think then that's the niche that we have the yeah. liaison, right? And yeah. I think that's something that I'm strong at. And Kehoe, everyone that works with us at Kehoe is strong at is the the relationship in that and the balance between manufacturing and a customer or yeah. the OEM. You know, it's a lot of massaging that relationship and making it run as smoothly and on the timelines that you want. Yeah. So I would say that for us, that's a strong suit, especially me personally coming from the manufacturing mm -hmm. space. I feel like I, I, I feel like maybe it's not reasonable requests sometimes that I give to the manufacturers, yeah. but that I'm like, okay, I know kind of what we can do and what to push on and what not to push on. Correct. And with the customer, I can kind of answer some of those questions to alleviate the back and the forth mm -hmm. with the manufacturer, which they appreciate because they're running a million miles an hour as well. And so I, that relationship with the customers has just grown. And that's why I'm building out the electromechanical line with the gearboxes and the motors and encoders, because a lot of customers are coming to me for a solution, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they know my experience in previous projects and my mom always says your hardest customer is going to be the most loyal, yeah. you know? And so I get asked a lot to help them in these situations. And some of them, you know, are good fits and some are not. And so yeah. I try to connect them to maybe what I think could be a better fit. That for them. comes to your competitive advantage of understanding this. And I think of your skill set, knowledge and experience, you can educate the customer, which they trust you. Because yeah. you understand the manufacturing process. You understand how it works. Okay, I understand this. Works. We can figure this out. We'll talk to the factory because that kind of raises the bar with people who are reps who haven't had the experience of manufacturing or been traveling to Asia, to the Far East, to understand the culture yep. of how they can they can figure how it out, how, how it works. How to work through the email system email and system, the phone yes. calls and to, you know, you just, it's that experience mm -hmm. that I think um, has an advantage. You know, some... Uh, the products that we offer, yes, there's some advantages over our competitors, but really I think a main thing with Kehoe is our um, honesty and our trust with our customers and then being able to navigate through that relationship. And I think that the customers really appreciate, you know, us reps in, in the field of manufacturing and electronics because we, we take a middle ground, right? And so we're like, okay, this is 
here's a, a mix between the both or here's a flavor. You know, I feel like they value that because it's not just strictly coming from one point of view, yeah. maybe. So do you have engineers, uh, you have engineers on board? Do you have double E's on board or how, no. how do you work? Mm-mm. So, so you, I utilize the factory. manufacturers. Okay. So that's yeah. kind of a, pr- that kind that of, model. that is that's a pr- prerequisite with me yeah. is to have strong engineering uh, yeah. capabilities with the manufacturers that I partner up with. And so, you know, I don't want to, mitigate you know i feel like leave it up to the manufacturer double e to talk to double e and Mm -hmm. i can help facilitate and help through those areas to push through things through and when we lock in the design and things like that but trying to keep direct contact on the engineering side as close as possible but of course i get people that ask for engineering services um, in order to launch a new product and things like that so i work with companies like novo engineering down in san diego and um, other engineering firms when necessary okay. i guess you to give you the more technical engineer yeah it's the support of that that's yeah because yeah, that's a whole nother they want to hear hey i want you know well it's easy you can pass through a gerber file here here's a gerber file pcb it's easy you yes. can pass through you can, you can pass through a lot and i think from your experience as my experience i could look at a board i know what things do what the functionality of components sure. do mm-hmm. i just don't know the circuitry side but i know the functionality and form i know fit the, function form, yeah form fit right? function the form fit function and the passive and all tolerance you know all i Yes, I've been so um, yeah fortunate. I've been involved in that because we do a procurement side and we do the design side. And for us, um, and I think you have a niche because as a, the reps, I didn't realize there's so many reps. And when I went to ERA conference, Is I didn't there? realize there's so I many don't reps know. I didn't in know Orange that. County. There's like thirty really rep companies in Orange County. Ca- okay. or so I had no idea, and they're all small, but. You know, it's, 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 to be honest, it's an aging demographic of the rep companies. Yes. A lot of them don't have succession plans in place. They Agree. just They have some lines. They work with some, maybe the top tier distributors in the TTIs and Adonis and Arrows that, that have their tier one lines. But um, I can see that the rep model is, is, is transforming and being more dynamic. And I think you're on to something with your rep model of how you are doing it to bring yeah. the the new generation, the new generation, the new era of, of the rep directly working with the factory. Cause a lot of the times these reps don't directly, they also work with the distributor too. Yes. And there's a lot of people involved. Yes. Causes a little more politics. Yes. Causes delays on answers. And um, there's a lot more approvals to be involved into. Yeah. And the products I think you, you handle are, some of them are very high end. Some of them are not, but some of them are sexy. Some, are some sexy of them are not. not and they're yeah. less than a dozen. So we're not, yeah. I'm not trying to sell everything, yeah. every widget to every person. Correct, you know, correct. that's not what I really want to focus on. And I think, you know, for us being a woman owned company is a big, is a big deal. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm proud of that and yeah. excited about that. And this industry, the electronics, I'll be honest with you, you as well. When I would go to some meetings and things like that, it, it, the demographics were on the older side because because of that age demographic, you and know, diversity and the diversity and, diversity and what was booming, you know, back in the telecom and different mm-hmm. different times and technologies mm-hmm. within the last 20, 30, 40 years, you know. So um, that's why I was so refreshed when I came across you and your podcast and your marketing because I come from marketing yeah. too. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of like – the next wave, the next generation to come in. And I think that there's so, um, so much opportunities here and you don't need, you know, there's enough for all of us to play in this field, you know? And so I would love to like engage and to get more people um, experienced and in this industry as a whole, I feel like, you know, and I think what you do is great. I really like, like I said, I stalk you (laughs) pretty much when I look through my feed. So it's interesting with LinkedIn, right? So I've been on LinkedIn forever Mm -hmm. and no one really utilized it. Now today it's like my second email. You know? Well, I mean, if you have social, if you have social media, your personal social media is now your business social media is LinkedIn. Everything is on there, the content on there, and you're right. In the last six months, due, be, due to the pandemic, yeah, they said because people don't realize there's about six million users in the electronics industry, manufacturing industry on LinkedIn. That's six million engineers, commodity managers, people, right. executives, C level, whatever that are involved in. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of exposure. But it's how to build value and awareness. And at the end of the day, um, it's about telling a story, connecting who are you, because people connect with a story and the connection. Not everybody's, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You're probably not everybody's cup of tea, but there, you are a big demographics cup of tea. And that's what you want to you want to you want to double down on that because mm-hmm. that's where you can get um a lot of your new business opportunities mbos as i call it opportunities coming to you network and 
moving in that, you can see that LinkedIn was just used for, oh, is it just a hiring site or is it people to go there to put their resumes or who they are? Right. How to build, how to build a profile, uh, what do we post? And as much as it is, it's getting short because we are the same challenge as I started in the beginning back in, in February. I'm like, how do we post content that builds value or builds awareness mm -hmm. instead of just selling, right? Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of just selling, how do we build something that people could connect with us and course indirectly we sell or offer a service or a product mm -hmm. and we educate them and they trust us to come to us and say hey just like you said you have some people that trust you say sarah i don't know where to go but i trust you can you f because they they know you personally they they've connected with you somehow right um and then that's how it's happening because on social media just on our instagrams or facebooks we all have mm -hmm. clips mm -hmm. 50 second 15 second clips 30 second clips as funny as yesterday but, but i post about, uh, with that thing from brian uh, deluca he's talking about we engage with these short stories of clips and we feel like we know the person or we like the person so if ever comes that we meet or have an opportunity, we give them an opportunity. Uh, we'll give them opportunity, you know, and for our company, IBS Electronics, my Rob, my whole start of real talk was to build awareness. Okay. I wasn't doing anything on the selling. It was build awareness. Of course, I'm, I want, at the end of the day, it's about, but my thing was six months to one year, we're going to do this. I have everybody out there and have my salespeople and lead by example right? Yes. You lead by example. You be a mm -hmm. leader. Um, you lead by example, show them how to do and build value, and build awareness. That the same thing's bringing in, because as we're talking about diversity, Jackie Maddox, when I had on, she was one of my first people I brought on. I think it's women in show. electronics, Women in right? electronics, the we. Mm -hmm. she, um, can, she's trying to bring diversity. Of course, she's tied in with all the top level um, people and all the big distributors. Mm -hmm. um, she's very well spoken. She's very, you know, um, powerful what she wants to do and what she wants to bring women in and bring a community of we mm -hmm. but women and men bring them all together we're and members bring, yeah you're members we're, yeah. we're a member yeah i was really intrigued uh, about her story and listening mm -hmm. to her speak she's such a powerful presence yes. you know and um and it was nice just to even learn from it you yes. know and i feel like more people people women men anyone you know to offer some insight and and of course you tie it in with some other, other things. It's perfect. Yeah. I mean, as a sense of network and as myself, when I visited ERA, uh, back in Austin, myself and my team were the youngest also all of us there. We, we st stood out at the first cocktail. They're like, who are these people? <laughs> but, but, but I think I saw you with like your camera yeah, on your phone and yeah. like using that lighting yeah, to yeah. interview people. And you're like, one second, one second. Yeah. Can I have a word? I'm like, this guy is awesome so you know what my my like my my goal in life is for us to do a combo thing at era like oh. you know like the kathy lee and regis <laughs> at the rose bowl yeah, can I we would. and we have a high table it was like a gay i i that would be i cool. mean no flow you, you just you just brought up a crazy <laughs> idea to me uh you know it was funny because we were talking era and how we're going to make an era virtual but how do you make it engaging because us. yeah you have to have engineering people that are engaging yeah it could be us bring people in you bring in speakers you bring yeah. in live you bring a remote how do you bring because i've been on some webinar i've been on some virtual tours or things and after 30 minutes i'm like and they're very the tonality is very um as an engineer based i'm like i, I lose attention i'm like okay I got it, but yeah, you have to keep the engagement because our eyes get tired on screen. Yes, unless we're we're there's a story being told. Just like why we why it's funny is there's a story there's a book called Story of uh, Power of Brand, okay. um, which I would say there I'll, I'll I'll give it to you. Um, Power of Brand that it says everything is with a story. How you sell is with a story, right? There mm -hmm. there just like a movie. There is a way to build a movie that you gain the viewers audience. You know you gain their attention. There's a beginning middle end there's a love story there's always a villain there's always so we get and it's funny is how you built is like but there's some independents that try to make movies that don't have like an ending or something right. sometimes they fail but sometimes they do well because it's just different because we're not used to that our psychology is not used to it we're, we're used to a certain pattern and that pattern no mm -hmm. matter what it's a marketing with selling what type of product there's a story behind it so people connect to a story or a brand, mm -hmm. they or the person that's telling them, so to be original. So when I put myself on online and put myself out there, I all started with an iPhone. Now we're here, as I say, um, it was um, it's it, everybody related. To, who is this guy? 
Who is mm-hmm. Rob Tavi? Who is this guy at ERA doing video <laughs> of what's happening today? And I took Walt. I'm like, hey, let me just ask you five questions. And he did it. And I was awesome. nervous. I was so nervous. You nervous? You seem like such a natural. Like, well, I've just... been doing it more and more. It's getting it, but I got nervous because I couldn't even say Electronic Representative Association. I so kept what did stuttering. You say? I, no, I said I ended up saying ERA because we did it five times in the beginning. <laughs> I said you just said ERA because I was nervous. You know, because I just I don't believe but it. It, it. Then you get nervous. We stutter, yeah. but that's it's, that. It's, uh, it's that's, real. That's real. Mm-hmm. And it, there's no editing in that. There's nothing. It's, and that's one of the things I saw is that people make all these great uh, videos and images for their company and professional looks beautiful, but sexy. I'm like sexy, but is that real? Is that really what's happening? Or you want to show really the people and put them on and, you know, tell them about who are they? How did they get in this industry? Yeah. Show their virtual business card. Okay. The person, you know, they like dogs, they have a family. I connect. Oh, of course, there is a privacy. Some people like to be more private than others. But at the end of the day, when you're a Just salesperson. Just so you know, I'm an open book. Yeah. You can ask me any question you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. Well, you oh, know. Yeah, yeah. Well, get to Let's a certain keep point. It PG. But it, it, into points, there is, as a salesperson, as yes. a leader, you can't hide these days. You need to be there. You need to be lead by example and show. You can hide your you know, personal life, but some things about yourself um, there, there is a device for me. I'm open, but I always say is I don't have a business card anymore. I'm going to just go to robtavi.com and say, you contact me. You know, yeah. at these days it's like the virtual business card. I'm like, I don't want to carry a business card anymore. It's like just When's the last time you handed a business card to someone? Well, I did it at the ERA, of course, because ERA is the, the, the traditional. Hop ERA up. But like what time, you know, because of the pandemic, when's the last time you handed a business card? I haven't handed anybody a business card. I just did then. it for the last time last week and it took me two hours to find my business cards. Where are they? What's going on? <laughs> but you know what the first thing I do is for a tip out there for people, I take business yeah. cards. First thing I do, because I always lose them. I just go yeah. and link. I especially go to LinkedIn instantly and I find them on LinkedIn and I connect with them. A pleasure yeah. to meet you. And I have them because I'm usually I lose that business card yes. or you just go somewhere. It's in my stack. It's gone. And at least I have a connection with them and then I can instead of shooting a message and that became our, you know, back and forth for that. And I like what you're doing as far as the transparency and the openness. And that's what we're doing. You know, Kehoe Electronics yeah. is doing some podcasts and we're open as mothers, as women, as yeah. uh, business people in the electronics. And we have some good laughs along the way. And just, and that was my goal for that po- podcast in particular yeah. was being relatable as a mom struggling during COVID with three kids trying to get them online or trying to get them out the door yes. before my meeting and my husband's like aren't you gonna brush their teeth and I'm like we'll do it in the car right. you know and I'll have all the toothbrushes and brush your teeth get them out like but that's real you know not every day is uh, the kids hairs are, are perfect or brushed or teeth brushed and we're all trying to do the best that we can I, I 100% agree you know what I can tell you that's content Right there. You know, that just you just create content. You can have Brian here with a camera <laughs> filming. And you can make it a little bit, but that's content. Getting the kids right? out. Because this is Brushing mom teeth? life. As a leader, yeah. what do you do? As as you say, you're executive, CEO, leader of the company. This is real life. Right. I'm going, and people are attracted. People connect with that. It's a human. Oh, you know what? I, I empathize with her. I see, I feel it. And they, they connect with it. This is the value they bring this, you know, Sarah's not just trying to sell me a product. Yeah. She, I, I know about her. I know who she is. I, I, I already connected with her. Of course she doesn't know you personally, but I can, she's open. She's an open book and mm-hmm. I connect with her family. You know, I, if she comes in, I'm going to give her opportunity or I'll even, I'll even connect with her and give her up. Hey, I can see you. Rep- I'm looking for this type of product that builds that reputation, that yeah. openness. As you say, your open book, I don't know, you're doing it, you started the podcast and it's just <laughs> building it more and out there and building that content. Cause I think that just like you said, it's a very powerful working mom, you know, leading a team. How do you get kids ready? We're in a pandemic schools issue. Right. How do we sports. T- sports? How do we do this? You know, it's, you know, you're, it's, it's, it's challenging. And, but you, for yourself, you can build that. Yeah, and we can leverage this time to really show our kids how to go through a pandemic as far as putting our heads down, burying down, and not Mm -hmm. giving up or, you know, my Emma, my oldest, avid soccer player, she practices every day, you know, on her own. She's doing weights in the morning before school, you know, and just showing it because she's like, you work hard, mom. I see what you're doing. Nothing slows you down, you know? So I think to utilize this for my children to show them, yes, there's going to be tough times ahead and it's how you deal with them and move forward. And that's growth, right? I mean, through my experiences with my grandfather, you know, and starting Kehoe and now that's the next generation for me to maybe they'll want to get involved with Kehoe as well. I don't know, but to set, um, those, those mottos and those standards to live by, you know, a shoot for the or a benchmark that this is, you know, what we do to get across of get for my wife is very, you know, she's very highly academic, but she likes like 
discipline and how she was raised by a tiger mom, as she always says. But I'm like, <laughs> she built you. This is who you are, even right. though, and it's funny now, she talks me, you know, her mom is spoils our, our the grandkids rotten. She's like, I don't know who this person is. Right? This is, wasn't totally. me. That's this my wasn't, mom. This wasn't the person I grew up with. This no. was my mother, but she spoils them. She'll never let different me do rules. that. Grandma's different rules. Grandma's different rules. You know, the same as my mom. She was a mentor throughout my whole life mm-hmm. as well. And I'm still scared of her to this day. Like I do not mess around with my mother. She calls, I pick up the phone yeah. most of the time, you know, yeah. but, um, and now with grant, she, being grandma, she's in Montana right now. Mm-hmm. So that's why the pandemic is killing her right yeah, now to can. see the kids and stuff physically. But yeah, it's a, she's giving the kids candy before bed and mm-hmm. doing all these things that I don't know, that, yeah. that never happened to yeah. me, you know, sneaking stuff to them. And that's, yeah. You know. Yeah. But that's what part of being grandparents is all about. Right. <sighs> exactly. Well, now coming to the last couple of final questions. I, I don't want to leave. I'm just yeah. going to stay here. For I want to, I mean, these day. are something I want, we kind of, we hit on it, right. We hit on it, but how, mm-hmm. For yourself, your business, how has, you know, how has the pandemic affected your business and what did you do to shift uh, your operations and, and how mm-hmm. you communicated, what you, uh, you know, you had leaned in, what you changed uh, t- for the last actually two years because you had yeah. the tariffs and this. What really did you do to make a change and a shift? Uh, you know, I think it was my strategy the whole time as far as w- working with each manufacturing and not and making sure not all my eggs are, are in one basket and building a healthy foundation of customers, whether they're in industrial, consumer, med device, um, semiconductor, whatever that may be and what that looks like. And really kind of putting a few eggs here, 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 and spreading all these seeds, you know, and having a well balance. I think that took a lot of time to implement and to create. And to be honest, you know, I was coming up with a business plan as my kids are getting older, they're eight, six, and three. Mm -hmm. I was ready to add another division, the electromechanical like side that we talked about before. And so that was important for, important for me to build out and so then I can reach customers existing new and and have a full portfolio of products in different areas so China India Czech Republic Mexico US mm-hmm. um, local San Diego with right manufacturing and APC so diversifying yourself and going for it you know like we all talk about it and really have this vision and map it out and put together that business plan and that strategy and just knocking it out of the park and take those risks, you know, and, and commit. I think for me personally, sometimes I'd go back and forth and just commit and go for it. Yeah. We gotta lose. That's it. That's a mic drop right there. She just Boom. nailed if it. If I That's could it. drop yeah. it, I, I yeah. would, but fortunately there's like an arm on yeah, here. Yeah, there's an arm so. on there. Yeah. The stability arm, but yeah, I mean, you just, you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. It, it, as I say, is we, so there's no pivot. It's leaning in, making the change. You have to make tough decisions and strategizing, just like you said, strategizing. Mm-hmm. What is your future? What's your goal? Where are we? How are we going to touch? And in, in that, how, um, how's it affect? Cause you can't, in person meetings are very, di- much more difficult than ever been. Um, but how are you doing that? Where you're touching new prospects and existing customers. How's your mm-hmm. touch points? How, how, how did, you, how did you transition in that? Um, I feel like there are some customers that are still meeting face-to-face, okay. and it's a little bit different. You walk in, they take your temperature, you have yeah. your mask on. You the protocol. In, yeah, yeah, you go in the conference room, yeah. and you're on one end, and then the other person's 20 feet on the other end, you know, yeah. and you talk it out, but we get it done, you okay. know. And Good. then as far as prospecting goes, you know, we're a little bit old school where we still do cold calling, okay. um, but what we'll do is utilize LinkedIn okay. more, and so people can see the face with the name, mm-hmm. and we tend to get a good response out sure. of that. And we try to do our homework before, so we're not, like, prospecting someone. For us, we don't go after toy manufacturers, you know, so we're not going to prospect someone and just blast everyone with information. Like, we try to really zero in on how we think we could be a a fit, and timing is a big thing. So I may be told um, one time no, two times, three, four, five, six, but keep on plugging away, you know. So we are also started the Kehoe Electronics podcast, which has been good. And then marketing, I think, as far as updating our websites mm-hmm. and line cards and getting more soft copies of things and just trying to engage with people. I do a lot of lunch and learns where I'll supply lunch or right. coffee and donuts or whatever it may be uh, to capture the audience, to be able to engage. And so they have a snapshot of who we are. It might not be a current project right now, mm-hmm. but you know, maybe there's something in the NPI timeline within yeah. the next six months to a year you never know build so awareness you're building awareness, building awareness. Building awareness. what do you do you know i'm always curious what okay 
Well, what we do, because I would say, well, to give you a little quick synopsis, 80% of our business is in Asia. Okay. The 20% is here. We have to put designs, point, and a lot, we do a lot of defense business. A lot okay. of defense, aerospace. That's really where we're pushing to, and power. Mm-hmm. Power supply, like the Schneiders and the XP mm-hmm. Power, the big guys out there. Okay. So how what we're doing is things a lot of similar. We're prospecting. We have existing customers. Um, we do virtual calls, you know, and but from the marketing side, we're building awareness, we're building content, we're building, and we're trying to, what's funny is principle, coming to principles, a lot of our principles are not very marketing savvy, mm-hmm. as you would say. So the content they have, we have to beautify it, yes. bring value to it. And sometimes a lot of them, I mean, it's, it's funny, a lot of them don't want to get on video or do a virtual call. I've done some webinars. I've done a webinar with one of our lines, Dialtech. I had two ing- three people from Germany. I had one person from the U.S. and one person from India. Okay. All, we streamed it live. I did it off LinkedIn. Okay. It was, what uh, type of products? Um, they, they make dials. They make, tra- uh, di- they make all types of surface mount, um, surface mount dials. Okay. Everything. So from the transistors to surface SMD, everything's SMD, mm-hmm. lots of MOSFETs, mm-hmm. things like that. Okay. So we use those and we did a webinar and actually we had a good attendance. You know, we used, link, we, we used LinkedIn. We had 250 people signed on. Wow, we that's great. 90 people were on it streaming at the 45 minutes it was, which was amazing. I didn't know it was my first time. I was nervous. I didn't have the studio back then. I just did it from my desk. I brought yeah. the people in. We had the software. We're learning. And it worked well um, because yeah. I, I did it live and I shared it. I, you know, of course, people try to do webinars where they want to get an email address, is all the information. But I'm like, you know what? Forget this. Let's just do some of these this Ma- way. Make it easy. Make it easy for people to get in. I Instead like of it. trying to take their data, like, I want your data. I want this. <laughs> yeah. I want this. And of course, that's the old school way. Yeah, you get data because you can build their Rolodex. You can send them yeah. information. Um, but we did it that way, and it, it was successful. But it's also sometimes there are people, some people are camera shy, even engineers. Like, And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, let's get in front of the camera. So I'm like, okay, we'll, we, will, um, we will facilitate it. We'll create the content. And we'll, you know, we can't do the engineering side. We do have engineering, but we'll do the engineering, but we need that support from your end. So yeah, we're actually doing input. the marketing for our principles, a lot of them. I've no, noticed the same thing. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. the same thing. So we're doing the principles of that, you know, and then, of course, because a lot of things, we're passive, MLCCs, all of, and we're... Well, and you it, have a great team here. I love your team. Like, I want to set up a desk here. Can I set up the desk <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, we have room. <laughs> we have room to come in, Maybe you know? I need to take a tour after a tour, this to yeah. see where I can accommodate, like, five or so desks. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, we're doing a lot of similar things. Of course, digital age, we were set up cloud-based. Okay. So I set up, what's funny is I set up Microsoft Teams and SharePoint in 2018. That was my thing. 2018, I hired a new global ops person, our Delano mm-hmm. McKenzie, and he, I'm like, hey, this is one of your jobs. I want to go everything cloud-based. Okay. And he's like, okay. And Microsoft was very, SharePoint was around. Teams just started because Teams, as people in the know, took over Skype. Right. So, and Teams, and it was very it wasn't that great. We had to, we brought a lot of programs. So we, we did, we forget it. We don't want to hire these consultants. We did it ourselves. I had to travel to every single office. I had probably did, I was a traveling salesman for Microsoft. 365 <laughs> teams because don't you hate redundancy of emails of the same file sent to you five times with different revisions and which one's the right one? Yep. And I'm like, I'm over this. Mm-hmm. We can have a live file. We can share it. Yes. And we can update it together. That, I use Quip. I do Qu- oh, I Quip? do that through Quip. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because one thing, Google has it, Google's, but the problem is Google's blocked in China. Right. So we have a team in China and I'm like, I can't use work. it. So I had to go Microsoft. And my, of course, Microsoft is not a bad place to be. For sure. So we used it and we implemented it. And it took me one year for implementation. Okay. Um, it, I, it was probably one of the toughest uh it, toughest things I had to implement and because people don't like change. Mm-hmm. People don't like an ERP system or CRM system is difficult, but the, the, it's just like change. How do we f- organize ourselves? I'm like, you don't put anything on your C drive on your computer. You put it in <laughs> one drive in the cloud, the cloud because you guys break your computers. You have laptops, you lose you're them. You're on the disaster, road. You're on the yep. road. Things happen. I'm like, if today, which it is, if you cannot answer 95% of the stuff from your home or access any files from your mobile device, yep. you're losing. Because Correct. your customer is going to be ahead of you. You need to answer them and be able to, and as a salesperson, knows, especially in Asia, everything's running. So you're on the train, you're on there, you're in a taxi, you're in a car. They want to answer people. They call your you. night is their morning. Yeah. And um, so that we really, that really helped us when this pandemic started. We're like, okay, seamless transition. Yeah. We had all that in place. Everybody knew how it's going. Then we have a CRM system that we use pipe drive that we implemented. Okay. That's letting yep, us. they're good. Um, yeah, pipe drive has been very well. We've had it for almost a year and a half, and we've innovated with them, and it's been very good um, because it creates our and because it's you know transparency is one of the thing in this. It's yourself, you would build a new new MBO comes in, 
-hmm. What is the customer? What's the product? And you have to have the timeline from the MPI side to yeah. production. Mm -hmm. You need to follow it per the schedule. Okay, where is it going? You gotta How hit those it? milestones. Hit those milestones, and there needs to be a system that can accurately do it that's very easy to use because Salesforce is too robust uh, for me. Very robust. Well, you know, there's a saying that my mom said if you're working for the system and the system is not working for you, get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, but there are all sometimes when you're working for a system because you're not too computer savvy, you can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It's like switching from an iPhone to an Android or a PC to an Apple. It's like, but Apple's so easy, but it makes you feel, feel stupid sometimes. Like you just drag it, put it there. Like, Oh, oh I, I didn't know that. that. I could do I know, that. I know. You know. It's even with the phone where you can just go sideways and all your, your buttons come down with every, no, some people still don't know this is there. Who was it? Did you see the new Samsung phone that's coming out? No, the, the new, the new Galaxy? Is it? Which one? <sighs> oh. I send it to Brian. I'll have to I'm forward it no. to you. But it's, I think it's like, it opens up. Oh, it twists. It twists up, right? Yeah. It's open. Yes. Yeah. I saw. It's LG. Is it LG? LG. Okay. okay. LG's coming out with the, what? yes. Well, there is one. Samsung has a folding phone, but I think they, they 86 did. They did come out with it and I was having problems. Um, but now I think LG came out with this like one that flips and opens and it's like Aww. two screens and all the, <laughs> Kind of know. like everyone's workstations, right? With the dual screen. You know what's and funny is we're in China, if you probably travel like five years, people were using the tablets, that's phones. I'm like, this guy's this, <laughs> the phone's like this big. And I'm like, put, and I was laughing at him, but now I'm like, now I used to use a small iPhone too, but now I got the bigger one. I was like, like my, but maybe bigger is a little bit better Do sometimes. you remember making ever making sales calls here? I'm dating myself, but making sales calls, like pulling over on the side of the road and using a pay phone? Yes. Well, pay phone, anything we can use. And well, you can't find any pay phones really th these days. Everything mm -mm. is through. Or, you know, it, or it has a 15 inch display with touch screen on it. <laughs> Everything's touch screen. But you know, as I said, everything has changed so much and evolved. And as us being the new generation, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that you're like, we need, as I said, we need to tag team and do it and build the awareness. Yeah. We need to bring the new talent, the new, the new generation into the thing and make electronics hardware sexy again yep. because it was now it's kind of died down because people the software as I always say the software side is the more attractive tech people are attracted to people don't yep. realize there is hardware that goes right. on top of that and it's and it builds it a complete builds package a complete back, and it's exciting because you build a product and it goes you to a consumer it. and it goes to see you can see it. it's, it's actually tangible yeah it's You're a like, tangible hey, product. I helped do that. You know, like some of these programs that I work on, it's like my firstborn coming out of the production line, you know, and yeah. you nurture it for so long. And it's so cool when you go out there and you see your product, whether it's the heating pads for Sunbeam or yeah. Zircon stud sensors. And I always joke around with people like, does it work? Yeah, well, then we make it, you know. So it's cool to see your stuff in Home Depots and different, di oh, I mean, yeah. everywhere, the you know, in facilities, exit signs and emergency lights. I'm always looking to see if they're one of our OEMs that oh. we probably label for you know so it's it's um it's fun and exciting and i agree with you if there is a way that we could carry this through you know and build on it i think it, it's exciting and i think that's a lot is giving back because we were taught so much from our family Correct. and our fathers and grandfathers and mothers and everyone with in our family to build where we're at today. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if we could do that for the next generation to come and for the even where we are today the to build on that and to share with them what we learned, you know, cause we, we did, we, we've had some unique experiences, <laughs> hard experiences, a lot of sweat, blood and tears, you know? So I think I can probably go back on my phone 10 years ago and show you pictures of the kale going traveling to China and doing <laughs> things and eating things that I don't know what it was. Chicken feet. Chicken fe <laughs> yeah. You know, we, but it, you know, the experience is you're right. Building awareness and, and having, being excited about it and moving forward forward and, and, and showing back that and giving back. And so I said, mm -hmm. that's my biggest thing was giving back to the industry. And that's what people say, why are you doing this? And everybody always questions, you know, or people laugh or what are you doing? As he, this looks where I'm like, but then when you start going they start, Oh, I love it. They start, you know, as I said, they, they, they always laugh at you at the beginning, but once you get through, you take the hardship, they start mm -hmm. applauding you. Like you're doing something that's, that's out there for me. Yeah. The affirmation is fantastic. Um, but I realized again, for everybody listening, don't worry about you post something. Don't worry about affirmation. People see it. Don't yeah. worry about people giving you affirmation How comments. How many likes? Social are, media, yeah. it's not it's consumer social media. This is, I think business people see it. They, not everybody should have to comment. I mean, that's what they say. You can read them, but mm -hmm. in, I think in electronics industry, it's not like the finance or it's, people are still, they're there, they're watching. They mm -hmm. just, they just don't know what to do. They're not used to it. Our industry sometimes is it's so. It's different. 
behind yeah, on something. So they don't, for yeah. sure, you know, I mean, even when I'm like, do I, uh, sorry, a uh, Kehoe page on Instagram, like what do I post, you know, cause it's. You have to be there. Cause if you build content, I did it too. You have to be where the people are at. Right. Even though Facebook is not it, I, you have to be where the people are at. Just put it there because if you want to bring in new talents, you want someone mm -hmm. to go and you just copy and paste. You can put the same content everywhere. It's very right. easy. And I mean, they have these things called like Hootsuite for if you guys want to use. You can put the same picture and it puts it to five different platforms. And the, I mean, it's very easy yeah. these days. You can figure things out. Um, but over this, it's, um, but as I said, you have to be where the people are. Yeah. If you're not there, if you're not, and if you can't put your name, Sarah Kehoe, you can't Google it and your name doesn't come up or videos don't come up, then people's like, who is this person? Because I want, they want to qualify you. They, right. As I said, they want to, they want, your DNA has to be there. That's why if you put Rob Tabby on. Are you on TikTok? Um, I have a TikTok, but I don't use it. I should use it, but I don't. Let's do a TikTok. Let's do a TikTok. <laughs> Are you on TikTok? <laughs> uh, my daughter, I have an account for my daughter, which I kind of put a, a kibosh on it, yeah, you yeah. know, because it's getting a little crazy. She's like yeah. on the soccer field, twitching, you know, doing this dance. And yeah, I don't know. But I was thinking about doing one for Kehoe. I, you know? I, I, TikToks are fun. It's just a lot more creativeness. I mean, so people are so creative on TikTok. Yes. I, I'm like, wow, how do you guys do all this? <laughs> but the eyes are there. The people are there. Yeah. And for me, like, uh, I don't know if you follow Gary, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, which is very well known. He is like, you know, he's one of the people I look up. Simon Sinek for the business wise, the wisdom and what he builds his books. So what's my why and the reason for everything. Mm -hmm. And also um, and Gary V, like, just put yourself out there. He's like, you should build 60 pieces of content a day and post it because you're doing that. I'm like, 60. I'm like, no, I'll put out a couple of pieces. But 60. He says 60. I mean. He's saying you can build, like, our, this podcast can probably build oh, 200 pieces of content out of it. We can build different things, and that's it. You tear it up. Even yeah, a 10 minute, a two minute video, you can break it down to 10 different pieces or five different pieces and break it down. And you can take the transcription mm -hmm. and create it into a post. And mm -hmm. these you can see you can break everything down. So we're going to be connected for a long time. Yeah. So all <laughs> this, all this transcription, all this stuff can happen. It, it gets very, um, I mean, it, it kind of gets very robust, mm -hmm. but you start somewhere. You've already started somewhere. You're creating a podcast, which is fantastic. You're putting yourself out there. Thank you're you. you're engaging with the audience. You're getting awareness. As myself, I'm trying to do it. That's why that's why I love to have you on. So actually, actually a couple months ago, I'm like, you gotta come on. I know, Your and then I didn't is, hear, yeah. and it was kind of like, oh. I'm not feeling like yeah, that back. No. And then I start stalking you more on LinkedIn and checking out your podcast. Well, this is a perfect time. I think the timing is Timing's perfect. Timing's everything. Timing's you know? everything. It's okay. Timing it's okay. is perfect. We can do more of these. We can catch up. Yeah, I'm in Huntington yeah. Beach. Yeah. You know, it took me 15 minutes to get here. Yeah, it's fantastic. Here we go. We can right? come here anytime. Deal. Hey, we have, we'll, we'll do some more uh, videos and we create content. You know what? That's the thing is, is working together. We get stronger together, working together. And it's um, no matter what, at the end of the day, we build awareness. The people think, oh, it's all about monetary. At the end of the day, people get awareness. That comes. Mm, it's with yeah. building the pathways. There's more to it. More, there's more to it. It's like, what's, what's in it for me? And that's the thing. It's not what's in it for me. It's what's in it for everybody. For sure. And, um, and as you said, giving back the philanthropic side of, of taking people under your wing and showing them how the ways are. And, of course, I got Sean here. He's just an intern, but he's Hi, learned Sean. his ways. Mr. Calculus over there who's, uh, you know, he's learned his ways and he's coming in and he's learning the process of podcasting, you know, and all of it. So it's, it's yeah. been, it's been That's good. exciting. Yeah. So, but as, as the, my last question for you, uh -oh. what is, what is, I mean, I would say right now we're in 2000, I mean, what else can happen in 2020? <laughs> um, really, what's Don't. your outlook? You better not. What's on your something, outlook? It has been yeah. wild. Yeah, I mean, every day it's something new. <laughs> the fires were last week and all this going on. Um, yes. But um, what is your outlook for the future for technology and industry? What do you see in the next? I mean, as we've been accelerated, in six months we're accelerating mm -hmm. two years, I think. But yep. what is your, your uh, um, vision you see in the next one to two years that you are trying to pivot to? to be a part of what industries or what services i think what's rising is robotics okay. you know i partnered up with robotech who i'm going out on friday to go visit their facility and learn more about sensors and the motion control side of things but robotics i think are okay. getting heavy yeah. right now um i see that on the rise as far as industries i it, it really the pandem pandemic changed a lot of things on how we go to the airports, how we do things at home, how we do things at work, how we interact with people, you know, and I think you're going to see a lot of um, changes, good and some good out yeah. of it, you know, in the future. And I think that we're going to rely even more heavily on electronics and on technology and pushing the envelope mm -hmm. 
and doing the next generation of products within grocery stores, in industrial, in military, in uh, hospital settings. Yeah. You know, I think you're going to see shifts across the board. And uh, as far as resources to help implement and execute yeah. those strategies, I think they'll be there. Well, what, do you, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Well, in line with that, I think the more of the connectivity, mm-hmm. sensors, connectivity, the IoT, 5G will in the next year will be rolled out even bigger and better. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, things change. Things will be talking to each other. Uh, everything will be wireless. But I, I, in the industry, Great. I think it's going to be very, very powerful is power. People don't realize everything needs power mm-hmm. and everything is being portable. And of course, there's high power. There needs to be inverters, solar power, wind power, right. the EV cars, which is, is it's still worse at like the infancy of electronic vehicles. Yes. And it's going to grow and grow and grow. From that industry, it's going to it's going to grow and I mean, grow. Especially and grow. in the logistics, right? Log- I mean, log- we're doing UPS trucks and yeah. on a different field than just consumer cars. And even. you're talking about robotics, logistics. Everything's robotic. Drones it's, dropping yeah. off our groceries and yeah, everything's like robotic that. and three. You know, because warehousing storefronts are going to be. It's, it's sad, but a lot of storefronts will be closed and be much more online, which causes more robotics for delivery, just like the drones. You know, the Amazon style um, of of instant now because that's you know it's funny as people say i mean take it so amazon really doesn't sell anything they're just a pass-through right it's which is amazing you know but at the end of the day they're giving the customer what they want and that's really what's changing is the technology evolving we're moving forward the industries of power robotics manufacturing and iot sensors and for me i'm really investing in sensors, sensors. and power mm-hmm. high power going into of course aerospace defense is there aerospace defense but those are most project based they yep. aren't very you know you're going to life cycles yeah. the high mix low volume but for power industrial you know and look at us we're podcasting more technology like this remote technology cell phones of course are not what we sell <laughs> we don't get into that field, <laughs> but things that can accommodate that and go into it. But connectivity, we're being more connected to wherever we are. Mm-hmm. It's just going to get more and more. The internet is changing that. Our, uh, the way we behave, the way we um, take information in, um, because news. And is, how they use the information. How they use in, I, I, exactly, exactly, how they use information. And, but overall, I think really medical, mm-hmm. industrial, high power drivers. Of course, that industrial is never going to go drivers. Yep. Data centers. Yes. For data, everything's cloud computing. Everything's cloud-based. No one right. wants to host servers anymore. Everyone's cloud. So that's going to get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of MRO, meaning repairs, because so um, they're all, s- data centers are still mechanical drives. Mm-hmm. So that's a big business, which I haven't got into, is make the drive business. But these are a lot of things, because things are not going to solid state. There's no more mechanical, because but solid state, I think the quality hasn't got to the point where th- it's so easy. It drives, um, it's, they're much cheaper. Yes. The price point's still it's lower. Solid state's coming down. Yeah, it's getting agree. more and more competitive. Um, but yeah, that's really where I see the industry. And of course, medical, you can see it. Medical, you go into a hospital. Yes. Everything is, is computerized. Computerized the lighting to simulate the day, you know, so to help with the patients that are in the rooms, like the being able to u- utilize t- color tuning and LEDs in a hospital setting and, or the precision in doing some of these procedures on patients, you know, to have the exact precision and less e- invasive, you know, yeah. and I think all these things are great. It's, it's, and it's coming and people think, oh yeah, ventilators were big. I'm like, ventilators, ventilators, guys, that's, you see everything that's in the hospital room that it's, it's not just, yeah. there is so, well, ventilators are a small part of just because of the demand because of this pandemic, but there is so much more part in all the new they're just being renovated, retrofitted, the, and you see everything's paperless. Mm-hmm. Everything's digital. Everything is from a band and, and traceable, traceable, traceable. You know, to monitor who's grabbing meds and who's in monitoring exactly the whole process from yeah, start to finish. Exactly. So of course, right now we control lives from a handheld. That's going to mm-hmm. be there, but everything's connected. And and I really think, of course, automotive is a big. I think automotive is in automotive in Spain that there is the trucking business, there is the consumer business, mm-hmm. there's a lot of different businesses out there um, that will benefit. And of course, I think both our industries are higher mixed, lower volume. We're not in the consumer based. Yeah. We're in, you know, we're in that, or of course, the higher price points, because we also sell to a lot of power companies to build for power supply companies. But I like feel GM. like, you know, it's survival of the fittest too. You know, we can all do this and we yeah. can all overcome it and move forward and be successful and we all work together and collaborate more and put our minds to it, you can do anything, you know? And it's the people that I think in the companies that really have the drive, the heart, the risk to take and yeah. the technology to implement it will well, execute. We can co- We can go into customers because our company 
does act as a rep for our distrib- for our manufacturers. But, yeah. you know, you have a, pro- hey, we have this, we get total solution. You can do the closures, you have the connectors. Hey, I have some of the semiconductor parts. I have some of the passive yeah. MLCs. We can, hey, we never know. One day we can do, a, have a total solution for a customer. You got, you know, Keyhole, you got IBS together. We go into a total solution. Like, wait a minute, this is fantastic. Right, one-stop shop. One-stop shop. shop and they, um, the engineering, because as I said, there's two, people don't like to deal with so many different people. Too many hands. Too many hands and costs goes up. Everything goes up. Too many, too many touch points. Great. Everybody has to be reduced. That's keep why. It simple. Yeah, keep it simple. That's my motto for 2020. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple <laughs> keep and it easy. Keep it simple. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for uh, so much. You, I could do this all day. I think we've gone on for a little while now, almost an hour and 45 really? minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. No way. That yeah. Hour and 45 amazing. minutes we've gone through. It's been fascinating. I, think I probably we keep talked going to you longer than I talked to my husband last <laughs> night. Holy cow. Sorry, Jeff. We need to work on that. Yeah. Yes. It's, 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 it's good. Um, we got to do more of this. We yes. gotta be, and, you know, you're always welcome. You know, just if you if you have any questions as well, I will shoot things past you and okay. see what we can do and move forward. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Oh, for thank this. you. And thank you for everything that you're doing for the industry and for giving back to the community. I think it's amazing and um, just such just such a presence. So thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. And as we leave this, I always leave it. Be smart, be thoughtful, be generous. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I wanted this. to say that next time. <laughs> next time. <laughs> All right, All guys. Right, bye. And we're out. Bye.